8,000 people all seated for the first time here in South Australia and the atmosphere at Football Park is electrifying. In a few moments time the teams will be coming onto the ground. But before then let's join our commentators for today's game. Peter Marker, the former state captain and Glenelg captain and Ian Day who played in that 1964 Premiership side for South Adelaide then retired and has been commentating league grand finals ever since. Ian, firstly to you, how many is this today? 18, I think, Bruce. I don't like the count. I'm starting to give my age away, but I can remember the 64 grand final. And, Peter, you can remember a few, but haven't been too successful in them. Yeah, I can remember far too many that we've lost in. We, uh, we only won one that I played in, but this one's an interesting one because um, four to five weeks ago, Glenelg played Norwood here in front of a big crowd, and uh, Paul Weston, the base skipper, who's rumoured to join Essendon in the VFL next year, he let loose a, a 75-metre torpedo punt which uh, snatched victory for Glenelg in the dying moments now um, with that sort of background obviously these sides appear to be evenly matched although perhaps nor to the better performed side in the last say eight weeks of the minor round. I think the important thing is that the Bays are playing their best football Peter at the right end of the season and their last three weeks have been exemplary in that uh, respect but the thing is that they've played two very hard games to get into the finals, whereas Norwood has had the break. Now, do you want to come up fresh, fresh or do you want to come up match toughened? Well, uh, I, if you ask me at quarter time, I might be able to give you a, a better idea. But uh, we'll go back to Bruce McAvaney now down, down on the oval. Yes, it's a tough one. Glenelg or Norwood in the 1982 grand final. Throughout the afternoon, at quarter time, half time and three quarter time, we'll be talking to Robert Oti former Norwood coach and of course Sturt champion, a member of the 300 club, Daryl Hicks, the Central Districts coach, Hayden Bunton, a name very well known throughout Australia for his deeds in Tasmania, Western Australia and here in South Australia with the Norwood Football Club and of course the man who sometimes has been referred to as the king of football in South Australia, Neil Curley. So Oti Hicks, Bunton and Curley will be giving their comments on the game at quarter time, half time and three quarter time. Well for the pre-match entertainment today we're very lucky here in South Australia. We have the former Queen of Pop, Colleen Hewitt. and shack along the road to Gundagai where the blue gums are growing the Murray Beach is flowing beneath the sunny sky where my mommy and daddy are waiting for me and the pals of my childhood once more I will see then no more will I when I'm heading straight for home along the road to Gundagai. Everyone! Winding back to an old-fashioned track along the road to Gundagai. Where the blue gums are growing, the Murray Beach is flowing beneath the sunny sky. more I will see then no more will I roam when I'm heading straight for home along the road to Gungagai. Well I must say that it is a great honour to be here today and I'd like to welcome everyone that are jam-packed in 
Melbourne Football Park here and also a big welcome to the people that are joining us, the millions of people right around Australia. We'd just like to say a very big welcome to the 1982 South Australian National Football League Grand Final. I'd like to see all the Glenelg right arms up in the air. All the red legs arms up in the air. Sing with me one of my favourite Australian songs. And loud and clear, we'll sing. Matilda with me. Come on! We'll sing Matilda. We'll sing Matilda. You come on, we'll sing Matilda with me. And he sang as he watched, and he waited till his Billy boy. You come on, Welcome back to Football Park and it's a big welcome to the former South Adelaide coach and well I don't know Daryl, uh, is it former Central Districts coach or not? We're, we're hoping it's not. I'm hoping too. Hayden, you've been, you, Hayden, you've been here before on a grand final day with South Adelaide. Yeah. What's the feeling like from a coaching point of view? Well you've got faith in your players Bruce, that's about what it amounts to and uh, I would say both uh, John Halbert and uh, Neil Baum would have that. Uh, you can't see your side losing it. Uh, if you go out with any uh, any other feeling will end, you know, you've halfway lost, you've lost the game. But today the atmosphere here, it couldn't be better. I, I was at the MCG last Saturday and uh, our atmosphere here is different, but uh, you couldn't get any better than it is here. Uh, a bit of a win, but uh, I don't think that'll matter too much. It's going across the ground now. Uh, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be some real big game today. Well, Darryl, you've had a good look at Glenelg. You played them three times. I beat you twice. You thrashed them the last time. You've had a good look at Norwood. You did very well against Norwood Central District. How do you see the strength of the two teams? I think that both sides are very evenly balanced, like they both play uh, Ruckman at full forward. They've both got a big man and a little wingman. Very, very similar sides, and both deserve to be in the grand final. Norwood, by being superior in the finals, and Glenelg, because they've really worked their way through the competition to be there. It's going to be a very tight game, Bruce. There's nothing in it. I reckon the lack of finals or injuries could determine this game. An important player for Nord, as we see the umpires coming out today, an important player for Nord has been Neville Roberts, Hayden. He's kicked 81 goals from half forward this year. Do you think John Halbert will have a set plan for Neville Roberts today? I think certainly. He'll leave uh, one, somebody on him, probably Sebo, and then just see how he, he handles it. I wouldn't be surprised if they use another player to come across in front of Neville Roberts. They know how damaged he can be, and I think that uh, they let him loose there in trouble. One point with the Glelg side, uh, their captain, um, he was uh, off yesterday, uh, didn't, uh, was in bed, in fact. So uh, a lot would, uh, you know, how Western uh, is today would uh, depend on how the result of the game goes, I would say. Darrell, do you see Glenelg having an advantage in the ruck with Big Kernahan and Carey? Well, Peter Carey's had a thigh injury for the last two weeks, which he's carried magnificently. The little bit of wind, though, means that the bigger men in the game, Carey, Weston, Corns, and for Norwood, Button, and their ruckman, could be a little bit disadvantaged. So the ball will come to ground a lot more, and I think it's the running players through midfield who will determine the game. We're seeing a lot of the running players today, Hayden, the Carlton type players, the, the followers that aren't six foot one, the followers that are about five foot ten and can really run and break up an attack. What they do and what Carlton did very, very well was to break clear. When they get possession of the ball, they don't hurry their kick. And accuracy is everything. If you can steady yourself and balance before you kick, and you've got the players that can run, break clear, only by two or three yards, they're hard to, to, you know, to, to pull up or to, to catch up with, and they just have a more of a deliberate kick. And I would say the side that doesn't 
kick the ball with you know quickly and just uses a little bit more balance and takes what time they have if they do have a yard or two uh, will win this game because accuracy is everything particularly in grand finals Darryl, there are a lot of players playing today that haven't played in the grand final haven't seen a crowd as big as this in adelaide do you think finals experience is a very important thing yes it is we certainly found that when we were knocked out quite easily but for each of the new players, I think both sides have got approximately the, first, the same number of, of young players on the side. And whilst they're very excited as they run onto football park, five deep breaths and the first touch will even up all that. Well, we can see them at the moment. Paul Weston leading Glenelg out. Of course, they've had an unlucky run, I suppose you could say, Hayden, in finals. 1973, they won. They've been in a lot of grand finals since and haven't been able to win. Do you think, do you think that's a needle that John Halbert can use today and help Glenelg? Of course it is, because the disappointment of those finals are felt not just by the players, some of the players played in those four they lost, I think it's four, Bruce, uh, but a lot of the people in the club, the Harry Kernahans, the, all the administrators, the people are there year after year after year. The look on their faces uh, just before you run out, it must mean something to the players. They must be feeling themselves, we won't let you down today, and uh, certainly that's an incentive, a greater incentive for Galil. But then again, Norwood, you know, Norwood are a side with a lot, lot, lot of pride, a lot of tradition, and... Uh, you know, they'll be out there. I don't think anyone will give an inch today. Well, we're just about set for the game. Both sides are out there. Thank you, Daryl Hicks and Hayden Button. Let's join Peter Mark and Ian Day once again with the teams. Thank you very much, Bruce. And uh, the teams are on the oval now, both sides, Norwood and Glenelg, and the start of this 1982 grand final not far off. We'll have a look at the Norwood side and see how it lines up. There from the, uh, from the forward line, Richard Nagel, age 20, Jim Michael Annie, and Keith Thomas. Keith Thomas, a very exciting player for Norwood. A lot cross half forward. Gary McIntosh has been a great player this year. Neil Button, he was a ruckman, but now he's a big burly centre half forward. He's age 30. And Neville Roberts, the man that's kicked 81 goals, a former Richmond player at half forward. Actually, he plays out of a forward pocket. Across the wing, across centre, Duncan Fosdyke, Philip Gallagher, back after injury. Andrew Aish, brother of the 1981 McGarry medalist. A good centre line. Half back line, Frank Stemper, former Woodville player. 30 years of age. Jim Teal, the strong man at centre half back. He's age 26, and Danny Jenkins makes up the half back line. Across full back, a very strong full back line. Tom Warhurst there at full back, playing uh, playing very good football. Bruce Winter, he's played a lot of games. He's in the back pocket, and Wayne Schmal took over from Greg Nicholson when he got in injured earlier in the year. For the Ruckman, the former Victorian giant Jeff Ferring, he can kick a ball a mile. Michael Aish, 1981 McGarry medalist. Hasn't had as good a year, but still a good player. Greg Turbel, the acting captain, or in fact the captain of the Norwood side today. A good, strong, hard rover. On the interchange bench, Paul Adler and Greg Thomas. Greg Thomas, a bit unlucky. He's kicked a lot of goals this year, but that's how Norwood line up. A very good, strong side for the day's grand final. Now we'll have a look at Glenelg, better known as the Tigers or the Bays, coming from the name of the Glenelg Bay. Across the half-forward line, 21-year-old... Michael Lunnis, this is a full forward line of course. Stephen Kernahan, 19 years of age, has been signed by Carlton, a magnificent young player. Peter McInerney, 28 years of age. Across the half forward line, Chris McDermott, only a young player with plenty of promise. Paul Weston, a doubt as to whether he will play in South Australia next year or start in the VFL. Ralph Sewer, a veteran of uh, many, many games, 31 years of age, comes from Woodville, yet to play in a final. He's getting his opportunity this afternoon. Across the centre line, Chris Duthie, David Holst, David Marshall, a very nippy trio. Half back line. Go across the half back line, we'll have um, Peter Maynard, an ex Melbourne player. Graham Corns playing in his eighth grand final. John McFarlane, the full back line. Jim Liu. David Frost only got his opportunity a few weeks ago in playing grand football at full back, and John Seabohm. The interchange players. Well, first ruck we'll have a look at first. Peter Carey, a player who's been under a cloud with a thigh injury in recent weeks. John Painter and the 1982 McGarry medalist, Tony McGuinness, only 18 years of age. The interchange players, Michael Farquhar, who only came out of retirement a few weeks ago and he's already back in the senior side playing in a grand final. And young promising player, Tony Simons, 20 years of age. And the Tigers playing in the black Guernseys with gold sash. Everything in readiness now for the start of the game. The two umpires in charge, Laurie Argent, just uh, saying hello to Colleen Hewitt there, very close, having his first grand final. And Des Foster, whoa! Well, he's had his good grand final already. He's the veteran of South Australian umpiring, our top umpire for many seasons. And uh, he's having, I think, Peter, his third grand final, is it? Yes, I think it is, Ian. He's uh, 
Had a lot of grand finals experience, and uh, I guess it's a, it's certainly a big day for the umpires because, uh, uh, like it or not, they've got a very, very important job to do, and let's uh, let's hope they do it well. The two captains coming across now. There's Paul Weston. Under a cloud yesterday in bed with the flu. And there's Greg Turbel, who took over the reins from Philip Gallagher when he fell out during the year with an injury. Here's the toss. Paul Weston for the Glenelg side has won the toss and will kick to the southern end, which is favoured by a breeze of three to four goals. Well, the breeze, Peter. Uh, Weston has won the toss, favouring the golf course or the southern end of Football Park. The other end is the lake end or the northern end. Uh, the Bays have won the toss, Peter. Uh, worth, what, two or three goals? Yes, I think so, Ian. A very important toss to win. The, the, elements do, uh, or the elements do have an effect on the game down here at Football Park. We're not far from the ocean. Uh, across to the left, you can see the lake uh, of, of the West Lakes development here. And uh, the beach would be, what, only a half to three quarters of a mile away. The wind blows in a swirling effect around this oval. And uh, although at the moment, I think it's going in a southerly direction. It's worth three to four goals. Glenelg have had a hard run. They've had three hard finals matches. They need a good start. They've got the breeze. Everything all set to go for the grand final in 1982. crowd of nearly 50,000 people at the 1982 Grand Final live throughout Australia. Glenelg has won the toss, kicking to the southern end. Umpire Laurie Argent puts the ball down and it's Carey in opposition to Ferring. Ferring gets up high but it's Carey's tap away. McDermott for the Bays, rides the heavy bump and the umpire has said he's holding the ball and the free kick, the first one of the match, will go to the Norwood player in Danny Jenkins. Jenkins at centre half back. To put the legs up over the centre line the Kangaroo Island Farmer, undecided which way to go, goes to the outer side, a nice looking drop punt, looking out there for Michael Ace, can't bring it down, quickly back on the ball now is Michael Lunnis, he's well out of play at the moment, playing in the forward lines, but Hulks boots the base towards the half forward line, Stemper back in defence, but a free kick is going the way of Glenelg to be taken uh, midfield, didn't see what it was for, but it's Chris McDermott to put the Bays into attack. On the lead is Stephen Kernahan, but the kick is a poor one. Stepper getting underneath the ball and quickly runs it across now to Bruce Winter. Winter goes wide looking for Michael Ace, but it's too wide. Rolls out of bounds for a ball in. We've been playing for one minute. Sides, I would say, a lot of the players pretty nervous. We haven't got any flow in the game as yet. Peter Carey knocks the ball back. McIntosh is there, picking it up is Ralph Sewer. He puts it across to Marshall. Back to uh, Holst it goes. He's put a very long ball in it, bouncing towards the goal. Oh, what a start to Glenelg. That's one they didn't expect from the boot of Holst, but that bounced through. An amazing goal to open it up. Glenelg have got one at the minute and a half minute of the first quarter. Well, they say luck's a fortune, but a brilliant knockout by Carey gave Sewer the chance. Now, Hulk's normally a powerful kick, but this one wasn't a good one at all. A tumble punt kick, and look at the bounce. Warhurst getting back, can't make the grade, and the Bay's off to a great start. Back to the centre, Ferring got his hand to that one. Gallagher takes off after it, so does Painter for Glenelg. Wheeling his way out of a pack and coming through as McIntosh. He gets it to Ferring. Turbles caught. Ferring picks it up and belts it forward. Thomas underneath the ball, it's punched away. In comes Neagle. Has to handball it clear. Neville Roberts. The goal-kicking machine, it goes across to Button. Well, Button dropped it. He's tackled, holding the ball. Great tackle, Frost. David Frost, the Glenelg fullback, applied the tackle on Button, and it was a beauty. Frost can kick a ball a long way. No exception, 60 metres. Getting underneath the ball out there is Painter. Well, the umpire's paying that mark. Didn't appear to have much of it at all. The umpires usually pay a lot of free kicks early in grand finals. Painter's gone to centre half forward. Or oh, Weston used the body. Schmal knocks it clear. Weston gets it out again. Ace is tackled. Didn't have the ball. Play on calls the umpire. Back to Paul Weston. He's put a long one in. It's carrying it. Short. Just offline. Here they've got a good start uh, in Glenelg. 1-1, 7 points. Norwood yet to score. 
kicking long, Peter. The breeze quite brisk. Winter to kick in. Going to the outer side. Looking out there for Michael Ace, who's going to get the leap. Had a frustrating year with injuries. Can't bring it down. McGarry medalist. McGuinness in there, number eight. McIntosh against Duthie, the former Broken Hill boy. Jenkins gets it out, but the ball is out of play. A throw in on the half-forward left flank. Tucked in towards the pocket. The Bays 1-1. One, one. The legs yet to open their account. Ferring 40 against Kernahan 4. Ferring's tap Gallagher. McDermott quickly. High in towards McInerney. Smile there with him. The ball to ground. Winner under pressure. Smile. Good handball. Works it out of defence on the half-back line. Jenkins goes in short towards centre wing. Here's a chance for Moore to run it out. Thomas over the half-forward line with a long kick. Maynard getting back, but it's out of play on the full, and the penalty kick will go to the former Melbourne player. His first season with the Bays and played particularly well as a rebounding half-back man. Well, the kick is not a good one, dropping well short. Smothered. Getting back on it now is Turbel, undecided where to go. Had to go and gather his own handball. Could got a free kick for a push in the back. Fosdyke in. He'll get one. Fosdyke, number 25, plays it on. Turbel dropped the ball but recovers quite well. Kicks it further afield. Good mark on outside by Michael Aish. The kick is to centre-half forward. Michael Annie for Norwood got up. Couldn't take the mark. There's Button. He's caught again. He may not have the pace to go with him today in these conditions. Peter McFarlane's been given the job on Neville Roberts. He's kicked almost 50% of Norwood's score in the last four weeks. The bounce at centre-half forward. Button's there for Norwood. Oh, he's getting a free kick too. Peter Carey for Glenelg. Not happy about that one. It's pretty hard to pick when two big guys lean on each other. And normally a play-on decision, but uh, Neil Button's got the free kick. Nicknamed the Bear for obvious reasons. Very strong body player. The wind holding it up. Players up at Peter Carey in front took the mark. Peter Carey has played with an injury in the last three weeks. He gave it across to Marshall. Marshall kicks it long, but he hasn't kicked well. Michael Ace for Norwood. Has his feet taken from underneath him, but finally gets boot to ball. Corns up high. Oh, Michael Annie. Number 31 is Jim Michael Annie for the Norwood Club. Took a strong mark in front of a pack. The Glenelg players forgot to punch it away. Good strong mark. Now he's probably too far out to score against this breeze. He'd only be 40 to 45 metres out, but the breeze is strong. It's against him. Kick on the way. That's coming back beautifully. Well, that's an important goal for Norwood. Put that one down to Jim Michael Henry. 1-1 Glenelg, a goal to Norwood, and that's a fine mark. Michael Ace did this brilliantly to get past the tackle. Now, the base tried to spoil. Michael Annie, 31. In goes Carey, trying to get the thump away, but Michael Annie, who's played 123 senior games, he's a fine mark and converted for his... 125 games, beg your pardon, converted for his first goal. Back to the centre, Ferring and Carey again. That's McIntosh, got the quick handball out. That's a high tackle on Turbel. Turbel has got the free kick. He's a courageous player, Turbel. He's played for many years under difficulty with uh, bad leg injuries. But he's playing very well this year. Schmal, not known for his pace. He got around McInerney pretty easily. Put it forward. Neagle's got it. Rick Neagle, a first-year player. To full forward it goes. Or Button's getting under it. One hand up. Couldn't take the mark. Graham Corns couldn't pick the ball up. David Frost boots it clear. It's gone very wide, over the line for a ball in. At the seven-minute mark, Glenelg 1-1, one, one, Norwood 1 goal. A throw-in on the half-forward right flank. Button ambling across to take the throw-in. He's stationed at centre-half forward. Obviously, he'll take the ball in the forward lines when it goes out of play. Corns to Duthie is good football to the half-forward line. Weston plays that one beautifully. A chance. Painter, he's got to get round Ferring. No goes for the long kick in towards full forward. Kernahan there getting back. Stamper, the youngster right there as well. Coming through the pack. Michael Lannis smothered off the boot. Here's a chance. McGuinness, the bounce will decide. Winner gets it down. Does this beautifully. Under pressure. Gives it away. Smart. Teal. Long kick out towards McIntosh, being set up, however, and McDermott comes over the top and takes the mark. McDermott, centre wing out of side. 
puts a high ball in towards the half forward line. No one putting any pressure on McInerney. He takes the easy chest mark. It dropped quickly. Maybe they were just fooled a little bit by the strength of the breeze or the way the ball dropped quickly. But McInerney is 45 metres out, favoured by the breeze. A good kick will make the distance. Underway, drop punt, it's just offline. One point to the Glenelg Rover. And they move to 1-2, Glenelg a goal. Bruce Winter, the fullback for the Norwood Football Club, will kick in. To the outer side of the ground. Michael Ace behind. Up, can't take the mark. McDermott knocks it away. Jenkins, number three for Norwood, has the ball smothered well by McInerney for a ball in. Games can be won and lost with inaccurate kicking. Glenelg so far have missed a couple they should have got. Teal, 33 for Norwood, gets the knockdown. Aish, Michael Aish, the handball came out to Gallagher. Not a good kick. Ralph Sewers marked it for the Bays. And off they go. Maynard from half back. Running, running the ball forward. Underneath it, Kernahan. Can't mark the ball. Fosdyke ran over the top of the ball. He's tackled. Warhurst is caught with the ball. Schmal dives on it. Players stack up and there'll be a bounce. At centre half back or centre half forward for Glenelg. Nine minutes or nine and a half minutes into the first quarter now. The breeze favouring the end to which the Tigers are kicking. There's Fosdyke for Norwood. Winter. Michael Aish getting plenty of touches. That goes long to McIntosh. Over the top to Keith Thomas. Norwood have got a run on. Or oh, the kick's not a good one. Maynard at half back takes a good mark. Maynard springs on the half-back line, gets it across to Liu. Liu got his opportunity when Stephen Barrett broke his leg in the preliminary final. He finds Carey, forced to kick with that left leg. A pull driving muscle on the right leg prevents him from kicking that side. Brutifully done, Stamper. Fosdyke, McIntosh, second opportunity, centre wing, puts the legs into attack up towards Roberts. McFarlane there, Roberts, one grab, can't complete it. In goes McFarlane, the ball goes out of play. 1-2 Glenelg, 8 points, Norwood a goal, a throw in, half forward left flank, the legs kicking into the breeze, McFarlane just picking up Roberts, Carey in against Button, gets a nice tap away, Holst couldn't take it, Corns can, back to Carey, that left foot once again, Stemper got a shocking bounce, Sewer a long one over McInerney, put him under pressure, likewise McFarlane, Gallagher in, but a free kick will go the way of McIntosh, centre field, and he'll put the legs into attack. He's playing very well. They call him the ugly duckling. That's his second kick, but he's had plenty of other movements. Three handballs as well. Schmal is taking all day to get hold of this ball. He finally does, then wobbles a handball out. That wasn't good enough. Away goes McGuinness. A long kick to the half-forward line. That's Painter. He put the ball down. Should have marked it. Jenkins got up to Teal. Teal is a strong man. The handball goes back to Jenkins. Shorty goes back to Wayne Schmal. Schmal, a young player. First grand final. Shorty goes. It appears to be Winter. Bruce Winter on centre wing for Nord. He's a long way down from his back pocket position where he normally plays. He's following his player down. A big pack forms. Through comes Keith Thomas. Oh, the kick wasn't a good one, but Neville Roberts is a one-grab player. He's caught. Holding the ball. And the player that got him was John McFarlane. And he's wearing Neville Roberts like a glove. Very dangerous player is Roberts. Kicked over 80 goals for the season. McFarlane goes in short towards the half-back line. McInerney at the second grab has been paid the mark. A little fortunate. But the Bay Rovers got it inside the half-back line. He's got... Carey and Corns up centre field, but he's going over that player's head towards Weston. The first recover is Weston. Does it well around Ferring to the half-forward line. Jenkins back in defence for Norwood, and he takes the mark inside the half-back line. Danny Jenkins, kick number five coming up in the first 12 minutes. Started very well. Puts it high back towards centre field, and the ball goes over the player's head. Thomas keeps it in. Holster's there. But the umpire earlier had signalled the ball out of play, centre wing out of sight. The Tigers may not be making the best use of this breeze, although it's hard to tell here at Football Park. Norwood go forward again through Greg Thomas. Smarlett or Neagle it was. Keith Thomas. Here's a chance, Turbul. He's normally a very good kick for goal. Just offline, that's a point. 1-1 Norwood, Glenelg 1-2. 
Neil Baum, the coach of the Norwood side, former Richmond strongman in his third season as coach, took them into the grand final once previously, but lost, hoping for rectifying that position this time. Gallagher puts out the pass to Roberts, that beautifully positioned. Oh, he ran into his own teammate, and they are down. Oh, what a colossal misunderstanding, although Thomas was coming the other way. An irresistible force meeting uh, an immovable object, and uh, the youngster is hurt. Trainers with him, but the mark with Neville Roberts, 40 metres out. McFarlane standing the mark. Head-on shot. The breeze coming in slightly from his left or right as we look at him. He'll need to take the left goal post as he heads towards goal. Roberts undecided. He might not even make the distance from here. The breeze is pretty stiff. Kick is wobbling. Well offline in the square. Button can't. Frost gives chase, but the ball is out of play. Full forward right pocket with the legs in attack. One of those unfortunate things in finals. Players committing themselves, and that clash then was uh, bad luck for Norwood. Frost for Glenelg gets the kick away. Stemper and Sewer. Sewer got the good bounce again. Geez, had a bit of good luck. He's reading it well, though. That kick over centre-half forward. Jenkins grabs it, then falls over. Tries to shuffle the ball out, but the umpire will bounce. Greg Thomas for the Norwood Club appears to be coming off. He was hit high. Can't see any blood there, but uh, Andrew Ace will be the player that will replace him. Up high at centre-half forward or coming through the pack. Painter. Here's Kernahan. That ball eludes him. Well done, Winter. Here's McIntosh, Norwood going forward again. Oh, that's not a good kick. Lee Hu's under it. Roberts takes the ball away from him. Jimmy Lee Hu, playing his 150th game for Glenelg, took a strong mark. The kick is back to centre-half forward. Sewer in front, can't take the mark. Smile. Onto the left boot. Here's the captain, Greg Turbill. Doesn't know which way to go. Stemper provides the run. He made ground with the kick. I don't know if he'll find a player. Frost for Glenelg has got it. Corns and Button. Button is spoiled. Ace has tackled high. Button's got it again. Dives on top of the ball. Through comes Corns. Out goes Corns. Michael Enney short. Oh, great kick, Michael Enney. Rick Neagle read it beautifully, but super football from Michael Enney to pick him up on a short lead. First year player, Rick Neagle. He can kick goals also. The angle is evident. How often does that happen? Norwood 1-2, Glenelg 1-2. Played 16 minutes of the grand final. The scores locked together. Graham just having a look at uh, young Thomas. That's a blow. He's been one of their fine players during the season. Kick in, not good. Gallagher gets bundled out of it. A clumsy tackle there by Duthie. Gallagher hadn't marked the ball, and it would have been to the Bay advantage. But Phil Gallagher. Out with a pulled hamstring for about nine or ten games. But a brilliant player when in form. From the half-forward line, or kicks into the man. Not a good one. Neagle under the ball. Leo, Andrew Aish around the corner. Short into the pocket. Turbul, uh, Michael Aish chips across goal. Looking for Michael Annie. Has he been paid the mark? No. Sock it away now by the Bays in defence. That was Frost. Coming to meet it strongly. Stemper. The legs go in again up towards full forward. Michael Annie up at the back of the pack. His first goal, Norwood 2-2, Lee Glenelg 1-2. Norwood are playing well. They're going against the breeze. They've hit the front, and that was a great movement. Michael Ace did the right thing. He didn't go for goal. They're hard to kick. There was no mark there. Watch the movement from Stemper. Down from half-back. Comes through beautifully. Now the ball goes over the pack. Neagle was the player waiting. With his third kick, brings up his first goal. Norwood 2-2, Glenelg 1-2. At the bounce, Kerner have, Kernahan having his first run for the afternoon. Gets it to McGuinness. The kicker's not a good one. Sewer gets around the opposition. A long kick in towards goal. Winner getting back and takes a fine defensive mark. Or are they going to call it a point? He came up without the ball, but the umpire has called it. A good mark, and Winter will clear. Goes to the outer side. 
Teal taps it forward, looking for Gallagher. Duthy in hard. Oh, Teal over the top. Gives Gallagher the opportunity, but it's all Glenelg. David Hull, centre wing. Can't get the ball clear. And the umpire's given him a free kick. And the Glenelg sent him in to put the base into attack. And Thomas looking very seedy indeed. He's going to have a lie down. He mustn't feel well at all. Holst is kicking the ball back to centre half forward. Plenty of body work there, but a Norwood player. That again is Winter. He's a very good catch of the ball is Winter. It's his third big mark for the quarter. And what a great start for the former Sturt champion. Kick number four to centre wing, getting up high. Button, G knocked it down Asher's throat. He couldn't take it, though. Button comes out with it. The big bear puts one forward. Lee Hu underneath the ball. Couldn't mark it. Andrew Aish, Turbel. Turbel will use more. No, he goes short with a kick. Aish duck, holding the ball. If you duck your head, you take the punishment. Lee Hu's gone off with an awful kick that is marked by Fosdyke. Duncan Fosdyke. Just short of centre-half forward. Nord have got no one on the square. Michael Annie going back. Fosdyke long. Michael Annie and Frost. Michael Annie fell over. Frost whacked it towards the boundary line for a ball in. Norwood 2-2. Glenelg 1-2. And uh, at this stage, Nord, uh, Ian Norwood a pretty good start. Norwood doing exceptionally well into the breeze, Peter. They're running the ball beautifully. Michael Annie over the top. Corns thumps the ball out of play once more for another throw-in. A change for Nord. Um, coming oh. off is Andrew Aish, is it? Andrew Aish and Paul Adler are about to go in. Nord with two injuries early in the game. Not going at all well at the moment, although they're playing well. Button gets the thump away. Turbul chips across goal. Coming to meet the ball is Marshall. And he's the centre wingman. At present in the back pocket. That's how far he's come back to defend. A good pass. Maynard. Runs in the over. I don't think he knew he'd come on. He was the interchange player. McIntosh. Gets a free kick for holding on. McIntosh, only a young player, a former Tompkins medal winner. In the underage teams, a high kick in towards the half forward line. Kernahan back in defence. He'll win the free kick rather than the mark. And the youngster to put the Bays out of defence. That's a high tackle. And uh, Stephen Kernahan, an exciting player, hasn't got going yet. Maynard to Holst. Holst to Centerman for the Bays. He'll kick long to centre half forward. Teal and Weston. A big pack. Warhurst is there too. Weston comes out with the ball. It was a quick kick and Jenkins takes a strong mark. He read it beautifully. Teal for the handball, but Jenkins is going to go short to Winter. What a quarter he's having. Kick number five to centre wing. Not a good kick. Kernahan on his own. No contest. He's got loose players. Well, not a good kick. Fosdyke, he's got long arms. Caught. Lucky. Short. Turbel. Turbel will take off. Roberts is on a lead. Beautiful pass. Straight down his throat. Neville Roberts is a goal kicking machine. He's a professional goal kicker. He's paid to kick goals. Let's see what he can do with this one. Against the wind. Lined it up. The ball coming away but slipping off slightly. A point. Norwood 2-3, the Tigers 1-2. Think his pay packet will be a bit lighter this week, Peter. Yeah, they might find him. Norwood doing well into the breeze. Frost. A magnificent kick. A ground covering 60 metres. Or oh, Ferring dropped what he should have easily taken. Sewer over to McGuinness. They go in long up towards full forward. Carey holding ground. Can't bring it down. McInerney. Fine goal. McInerney's first. The Bays 2-2, two -two, trail Norwood 2-3. Put that one down to this mistake. A mortal sin, you can't do that. Sewer to the, to the McGarry medalist. McGuinness, long he goes. Schmal didn't have the pace to go with McInerney. Onto the left boot, through it went. Mistakes in grand finals. They're murder. Glenelg 2-2, two -two, Norwood 2-3. Two the centre bounce. It'll be Kernahan again. This time, Ferring having a rest, and Michael Annie against that player. Kernahan's tap away, but it's Thomas who got it out. McIntosh, beautifully done. Nagel, Gallagher's running. In go the legs again, up towards full forward. Getting set again, Roberts! Fine mark. The second time he's got clear of McFarlane to take an important mark in front of goals. Eyes on it the whole time. 
McFarlane tried to thump away, couldn't make the grade, and this time Roberts is a lot closer goal. Only 30 metres out, and he'll need to take the left goal post. The breeze coming in, in swirls from that area. This time he's found it. He's got it. His first goal, and Norwood kick clear, 3-3 to Glenelg, 2-2. Well, they try to stop Roberts on the ground, but in the last couple of weeks, he's shown them what he can do in the air. McIntosh, probably Norwood's best player so far, got it out. Neagle gave it to Gallagher. Roberts positioned himself beautifully for the mark. McFarland couldn't get to him. And the rest is history. Norwood 3-3, Glenelg 2-2. At the bounce, it's Kernahan again gets the thump away. McIntosh didn't get it the first time. He will the second. Well shepherded. He's still in there, barring for the ball. Teal. Smile gets a bad bounce, but he goes back and gets it. Drives the ball to the half forward line. Adler. He was the interchange player when came on when Andrew Ace went off. The ball on the half forward left flank. The legs into attack again to the lead of Roberts. Ferring's in there as well. The big fellow up. Can't bring it down at the back of the pack. It's Roberts again. He can't get it. Button wants it. In there is Leo. Roberts over the top. But the umpire will separate players and bounce 20 metres out in front of the Norwood goal. Well, Neville Roberts, number nine there for the Norwood Club. A very dangerous player. He relies heavily on that man on his left-hand side. Neil Button. Down it comes to Button again. He's caught. Down he goes, and there'll be another bounce. Bruce McAvaney. Yes, Peter. Andrew Ace at the moment is having a stitch in his head. He's going to be OK. He'll come back on. And to Greg Thomas is winded at the moment. He took a hard knock as well, but Ace with a stitch at the moment. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, there was a lot of blood flowing from the wound as he came off. McInerney got it out. Oh, there's another player that ducked the head. Corns has got it for the bays. He gives it to Maynard. Maynard balances. The kick, not a good one. Fosdyke, too tall for Marshall. McDermott, finessed. Neagle, Keith Thomas. Oh, he's caught. He dummied the handball and then ran into an old player. Peter Maynard, and he put him down beautifully. Heavy body work, good solid football. A throw in. Button makes front spot, Kernahan at the back. Marshall, a long kick, centre field. Ma Michael Annie getting back, takes a fine mark between wing and centre. Looking for a lead. Players on their heels at the moment. He just kicks in hope, high ball. Button sets himself. McIntosh again, but it's Gallagher. McInerney, McDermott, rubbers the kick away, finds Sewer. He gets taken out of it, butters up again. Can't get clear, the handball's not a good one. McDermott at the bottom of the pack. Tunnel balls it out. Marshall, Sewer again, heavily met. McInerney, Peter Carey back in defence. The umpire has paid the mark. It'll be taken by Tom Warhurst on the half-back flat. Yeah, that was a strong mark. Peter Carey would be uh, probably two or three inches taller. Warhurst played it well. Button from behind, Kernahan even better. Took it off the top of the pack. Probably the best mark in South Australian football. A centre-half forward he goes. Weston dropped the ball. He's not known for his marking. Jenkins, Winter again. G. Teal is loose. That's where the ball goes. Didn't quite get to him, though. Duthie for the Tigers. Painter. Finally gets it. Back to Duthie. Wide again. Runnis. He's caught. And put down. Schmal through his legs. Off the ground. Weston. Puts one over his head. Here's Lannis. Guinness, oh, he stopped. Didn't appear to want that ball. Aish got rid of it quickly as well. Stemper. Jenkins. A couple of weak bodies there from the Bays and the Norwood Football Club out of trouble again. Over to Gallagher it goes. Centre wing, the Norwood centre player. Fires a long one in towards Neagle. Roberts comes to meet the ball. McFarlane right on his back there. And Roberts can't keep it in play. Into time on of the first quarter. Norwood kicking into the breeze, lead by a very valuable seven points. A huge crowd here at Football Park, a sellout. Button thumps it away. Holst in defence at the moment from his centre spot. The kick wasn't well directed, although the bounce helped them out of it. Painter taken off him, however, by Jenkins. Likewise, he loses to Painter. He took a head-high tackle, not healthy at all at the moment. McInerney, the Bays need a running player. Norwood tacking ferociously, ferociously at the moment. Ace gets it out to Turbull. Centre wing, the legs in again. Neagle getting underneath the ball. 
He's got it. Forward pocket. Too far out to score. There's the siren to end the first quarter here of the grand final. Just wondering whether Neagle will have a shot at goal. Into this breeze, it's almost impossible. He's 45 to 50 metres, but the youngster, he's going to have a try. Kick is going to wobble very short. Liu's got the ball, and quarter time, the scores stand. Norwood kicking into the breeze, lead 3-3, 21 to Glenelg, 2-2, 14. Des Foster's about to bounce the ball. Let's join Peter Mark and Ian Day for the start of the second quarter. The score is Norwood, 3-3, Glenelg, 2-2. Norwood will be going to the southern end, in other words, with the breeze. A very important quarter. Peter Carey is number five for the Tigers, ferrying over the top for Norwood. Fosdyke to McIntosh. Here's the destroyer, McIntosh. Had a great first quarter. To full forward it goes. A big pack forms. Kicking away is Frost. The race is on. Gallagher will get there first for Norwood. Can't get rid of Duthie holding the ball, according to umpire Argent. Didn't have much time to get rid of it. And Duthie, the strong Glenelg wingman, will take the free kick. He kicks it to centre wing. Peter Carey up. No mark. Down it goes. Hulse ran past the ball. Button. Kicked the ball forward. Doesn't go to anyone in particular. In fact, it's going to run out of bounds for a ball in. And the right forward pocket for Norwood. With uh, Norwood still leading by that uh, margin of seven points. An important quarter for the Bays, Peter. They must keep in touch. Norwood kicking with the breeze. At the throw-in. Carey tried to get his hand to it. Button ducked the chutney. Gets it out to Holst, however. Holst goes for the safety on the outer side. He's actually conceded ground. In fact, he must have kicked it out of play on the full on the outer side. Blindly onto his foot. And the free kick on the outer side will be taken by Norwood. And it's Fosdyke. Puts it into the square. Button's going to set himself. Oh, they're all up off the fingers. It goes through for a point. And Norwood move on to 3-4. Glenelg 2-2. Well, they all look a bit lethargic to me, Ian. They had a very torrid game last week. I wonder if they played their grand final then. Only six days to recover. Being on a Sunday wouldn't have helped, Peter. No, it hasn't. Here's David Frost, or known as Jack Frost, down at Glenelg. Kicks a long ball out. Peter Carey from behind. Took a good mark. Well, he's tried to play it on. He's got Marshall. McGuinness in the centre of the ground. Adler. Here's Teal running down from centre-half back. He's going to have a pop at goal, but he won't get far enough. The pack forwards on big mark, Michael Anny. He's taken another very strong mark. Watch it in replay. He's in front of the pack. What stronger hands he's got. Jim Michael Anny, number 31. His fourth kick coming up. The goal here would be... Most significant. Makes no mistake at all. Splits the centre for his second goal. Norwood 3-4, Glenelg 2-2. Brilliant rebounding by the Norwood half-back line. We saw Stemper in the first quarter. Now have a look at the bad bounce that went against McGuinness. He was unfortunate there. Adler beautifully done to Teal, and he strode through the centre line. I think he went for goals. He just came off the side of his boot somewhat. But Michael Annie beautifully in position and a strong pair of hands. He's no stranger to grand finals. He was a member of the 1978 grand final, winning grand final side for the Leagues. Back to the centre. Carey gets the tap down. It goes to Holst. Holst goes wide. McInerney won't quite get there. Yes, he does. He gathers the ball beautifully. Puts it back towards Sewer. Weston there as well. Takes the ball close to the line. Here's a chance for Nell. McInerney running. Kicks it across towards Michael Lunnis. Lunnis has got it now. Back to McDermott it goes. All got a bad bounce. Winter fell over. A pack form. Smile. Smothered. Kernahan fell over. And the umpire will bounce. Norwood 4-4. Glenelg 2-2. And Glenelg would certainly have to lift. They're not playing well at the moment. They look jaded. Fairing, number 40. Given the free kick away, put the leg out. Kernahan was on the end of it. How did you see that one in? Well, Peter, the umpire paid it for an illegal push away. It's a, a difficult decision for us to make from down here, or up here. But uh, it's an important kick for Glenelg because young Kernahan's only 20 metres out. And uh, they were starting to trail a little bit. It might give them the lift. You might say that they're looking jaded, Peter, but 
they might still be stronger at the end of the game. Kernahan's kick is a shot right off the side of his boot. And the Bay badly needed that lift. A point to Glenelg 2-3. Norwood is 4-4. He doesn't normally miss them either, Ian. He's a very good kick for goal. And, uh, oh, you put that one down as a big mistake. Winter. Bruce Winter kicking off. Teal and Weston, or Ferrings there as well. Gallagher read it beautifully. He was tackled when he didn't have it. Gave it back to Teal. Teal is starting to become an attacking player from centre half back. Michael Ace is on the end of that. That goes to Jenkins. Norder on the march. Jenkins' kick, not a good one. A terrible kick, in fact. It's gone out on the full, but the umpire's found a free kick. I think he's going to bring it back and give it to. He's paid, he's paid an FAD, a free after disposal. Um, I'm not sure whether he's going to bring it back and give Jenkins another shot for goal or it's going to be given to Neville Roberts in the right forward pocket. I think yes. Rocky Roberts is going to get a free kick. You did right, Ian. You called it right. It was a free after disposal. Roberts was closest. What a player to give it to. Roberts has got the ability to disguise a short kick very well. If there's any movement on, he'll use it. Here it goes. Oh, he's brought it right back to centre-half forward. Brilliant movement, Roberts. He's an out-and-out -out champion when he's got the ball. Conceded 40 metres to give that to Teal. And the kick was spot on. Gee, you wouldn't want to do that and uh, for the kick to miss. It would be terrible. Kick number four, Teal. He's uh, given it a great deal of uh, length that's gone through. Teal has got a goal for a centre-half back. That's not a bad effort. Norwood 5-4, Glenelg 2-3. What confident football, Peter. There's the centre-half back. He was prepared to run 100 metres from centre-half back to centre-half forward to take the pass from Roberts, knowing full well just how clever Roberts is at the disguising the short pass. And he conceded, I would think, 40 metres. You were right. And what a magnificent kick for goal. Norwood 5-4, Glenelg 2-3. A very important part of the game coming up. Big Jim Ferring doesn't quite know where to go. I think he thought he might run through the umpire then. He's jumped far too early. Turbo had his head taken off nearly. McDermott for Glenelg. Plays it out of the centre well. Kernahan in front. Here's a chance. Couldn't take the mark. Strong opposition. Teal. Weston. McGuinness. Here's a chance the Bays. No, he's offline as well. How far offline? No, he got a point with it. Glenelg 2-4. Norwood 5-4. The Bay's missing opportunities that could cost them dearly. Bruce Winter, a veteran of more than 250 games. Fine kick, thump further forward by Gallagher towards the half forward line. Falls under pressure. Well scooped out, Button, Turbull, a long kick in towards full forward. Roberts out in front of McFarlane again over his head. Michael Anney at the back. Frost comes to meet that player and forces the ball out of play in the full forward right pocket. Almost eight minutes into the second quarter. Norwood by 18 points. Michael Anney just looking for his opponent. We'll find that it's Carey who will be coming in just a second. Button there in support. Carey into the action now. Corns with him. Michael Anney's tap away. Finds Roberts. Can't dispose of the ball. Neither can Michael Anney. Force clear. Loose ball. Turbo trying to work the ball. Painter, well done. Can't get it clear. Marshall. The Bay's desperate in defence. Holt, there's their centre player in the back pocket at the moment. That's how far they've got to work to get the ball. Maynard High setting himself. Button against Corns. Button too strong in the air. A fine mark. Had to wait for the thundering herd, but he kept his eyes on the ball the whole time. Corns came back again. him. I think he might have dropped the ball on the end, but the umpire had sympathy. Gave it to him. He's 45 to 50 metres out. Should make the distance with the breeze. Although he's not confident, he's going to Teal. Intercepted. Western fine mark. Brilliantly done. Teal once again coming up ground, trying to get into the forward action. There's his opponent, Paul Weston. He's supposed to be centre-half forward. In fact, he's centre-half back at the moment. Fosdyke couldn't take the mark. Stemper does it well from half-back. Gee, they're attacking Norwood. They've got all their players running forward. Neagle, good mark. They want 15 metres, but they're not going to get it. Rick Neagle, one of the younger players for the Norwood Club. Kick number five, lurking in the square is Neville Roberts and Michael Annie. Jets, not a bad kick, it's coming right in. Oh, I think he's kicked it. 
Yes, he has. That's two goals, Neagle. Nord now 6-4, Glenelg 2-4. What a tremendous young player is Rick Neagle. Fewer than a dozen league games. The ball to the outer side. Stemper, a brilliant rebound effort once more as he fought the ball along the outer side. And look at the pass off the left boot. And Neagle took it well out in front of his eyes. And from that position, 45 metres out, kicked his second goal. Back to the centre. Ferring thumps the ball to centre half forward. After it is Fosdyke, he ran past the ball. Michael Ace left it behind as well. Painter got it back, didn't have a look. Jenkins took off without looking as well. Carey, high tackle. McDermott faints. He's going to be caught though, but gets his kick away. Teal under it. Thumps it away from Weston. Stemper back to Teal. Further afield it goes. Neagle again. The handball is too quick to Teal. He drops it. Jenkins applies the body. Teal comes out of defence. Faints another one. Neagle again. Quick on the left boot. He makes ground with the ball. Doesn't find anybody. It runs over the line in front of the scoreboard for a ball in. Norwood by 24 points. I'm going to sign for Glenelg again. Tremendous work then by Teal. I agree with you, Peter. The Bay struggling, but Teal, a brilliant game at centre-half back. Hole smothered. McFarlane. Close to the line. Thomas and McDermott. Stemper. Corns. Try to get it away clear. McDermott again under pressure. The Bay's being tackled very quickly. Just cannot get any freedom at all to dispose of the ball accurately. 6-4 to 2-4, a lead of 24 points. Kernahan pushed out, however, by Button, edged it forward, close to the line. Maynard's got to get a free kick. The ex-Melbourne player has been uh, one of their good players. There's John Halbert, coach of Glenelg. Kick number five, Maynard. Fairing from the back. Well, a giant leap from the Ruckman. I think he might have taken it. Well, who did take it? Fairing wants it. No, he gives it back to Thomas. He must have marked it in front of the pack. This is Keith Thomas. No relation to Greg Thomas, who went off earlier in the match. Centre half forward, Michael Annie, a big pack. Corns. Read it well. He puts it wide. Lunnis. He's got Elk's forward pocket plays. Now at half back. Doofy. Got plenty of pace, Doofy. Puts the ball beautifully to Weston. That was well put. Not much movement forward for Glenelg. Painter dives into the pocket. Weston goes for home. A very big kick. Oh, Carey. Oh, he's going to pay it. He's going to pay Carey. He didn't have much of the ball in. Peter, I think he possibly paid the free. Let's have a look at it. There's no free kick. Well, I don't know what the umpire played. We didn't see him come into screen, but whether it was the free kick at the mark, but I agree with you, he certainly didn't have a great deal of the football. Well, the fortunes of football, Peter Carey, a veteran of over 270 league games. He has to use his left foot. He can't use his right. One point. Peter Carey, unfortunately, has got a pull driving muscle. He just can't use that right foot at all. And uh, that's a problem. Glenelg 2-5, Norwood 6-4. Three important shots for goal. I've missed this quarter. If they'd got them, they were right in this game. You're never dead until you lie down, of course. 6-4 to 2-5. Winter. Towards Jenkins. Couldn't take the mark. The ball out of play. Played 13 minutes. Conditions warm for the players. Could be a war of attrition at the end, although Nord, the way they're moving the ball at the moment, it might not be needed in the last quarter. Dothy. Sewer. McIntosh. Jenkins. Not a good kick at all off the side of his boot. And a penalty free kick will go to Chris McDermott. McDermott, 14 is uh, for Norwood there is McIntosh. Chris McDermott puts a long ball to centre half forward. Or Winters left his man, but then takes the mark. Well, he had to take the mark. If it went over the pack, he would have been caught right out. Bruce Winter playing well. Kicks to centre wing. Corns in front. Button knocked it away. Through comes Seabone for Glenelg. Then McDermott is caught. Down he goes. The umpire let it go. Weston. Teal nearly took him out. Corns gave it to Holst. Holster's going for home. Gee, that's not a bad effort. 
The bounce will determine the goal. Back to Winter it goes. And then to Warhurst. Gee, they're playing well in defence, Norwood. Now Aish has got it. Michael Aish. Can't get into the game. Although when he grabs the ball, he normally does something with it. Button in front, no mark. McDermott, Weston, beautiful handball. Weston to Carey. Uses the body well, that's a mark. We don't mind them playing that one. Now let's have a look at Carey. There's the mark. He used his left boot again to go to fall forward. Weston couldn't mark it. Holster's come in. He can't kick a goal, though. I think Jenkins just about threw it through. Almost a gridiron goal. Norwood 6-4. Glenelg 2-5. Kick number five. He goes over the centre. Kernahan couldn't mark it. Gallagher's got the run of it. Corns takes it off him. Then ran past it. Finally to Maynard. Then to Duthie. Back to Corns to Kernahan. Kernahan further. Did he drop it or was he grabbed? Play on calls the umpire. That was McDermott. Lannis now. Forward the bays go again. Carey gets rid of Warhurst. Here's the run for McGuinness. Well, it's touched. McGuinness did everything to kick a goal. Did everything to kick a goal. And Norwood still maintain the lead. 6-4, Glenelg, 2-7. The Bays have got the uh, initiative at the moment. Playing a lot better football. This time it's Danny Jenkins. After Winter's last effort, he's been banished. Straight ground looking for Stepper. Used his body well. If it sits for him, he's in business. Grabbed off it. Well played. Frank Stepper to put the legs into a check between centre and wing on the outer side. The former Woodville player has announced his retirement. The way he's playing, I think a lot of people will try to talk him out of it. Kicks long towards the half forward line. Corns, a fine mark in defence. And the 34 year old will go back to put the Bays out of defence. Only his second kick. Carey's out there, used his body against Ferring. Fosdyke. Marshall. Nowhere to go. Carey won't be able to get there. Ace beat him to it. Neagle working hard. Carey's still in there working. Won't give it away. A strong effort from the Bay Ruckman. Carrying that right thigh and a bounce down half forward left flank. The legs in attack. Peter Carey had to do a lot of work then. Norwood had a chance. They're at left half forward. Ferring got the tap down. Lee Hu for Glenelg playing his 150th. Fosdyke close to the boundary line. McIntosh. Adler that was. Roberts in front again. Dives for the ball but couldn't take the mark. Lee Hu takes it over the line for a ball in. Both teams struggling for a winning forward, Peter. Yeah, Roberts is being blanketed at the moment while the ball's not being delivered. That was high on Carey. Carey will take the free kick. That was against Button. Peter Carey, no, he gives that one away. He doesn't want to use the, the boot at all. He gave it to McGuinness. A big leap from behind. Teal couldn't take the mark. Schmal has tackled. Here's a run. McInerney's got it. He's very quick. He's got Painter short. Oh, not a good kick. Warhurst came out, took a great mark low to the ground, a good defender's mark in. Yes, the Bay's not kicking well, Peter. They should never have let that ball get away. That's how you should kick the ball. Turbull, centre field. The legs over the centre line, a long one now in towards the half forward line. Coming to meet it, Roberts. He'll need support, finds it from Ferring. Can't get it onto his boot. Well done, McFarlane, to get it over now to Frost. Frost breaks clear and drives the ball towards the half forward line. Stepper can't make it. Lannis takes his eyes off the ball. Jenkins back in defence. We'll give the chance now to Teal. He's well clear. Goes in short. Beautifully dispatched. And finds Adler centre half forward. Roberts on the move. That's the way the ball will go. It's too far in front of him. And it'll go out of play in the full forward right pop. 6-4 Norwood. 2-7 Glenelg. 20 minutes in. Ferring off the ground in the interchange for a spell. Andrew Ace back on the turf after being stitched up. A throw in. Button over the top. Back towards McFarlane. Roberts there as well. McFarlane goes for the safety of the line. He had Lahoo there, but missed him with a the handball. But 
over 20 minutes into the second quarter. Norwood still with the break. Carey into Button. Lahu back to McFarlane. Short to Corns. The umpire pays the mark. Must have just been 10 metres. Gallagher on the mark. Probably not match fit, Gallagher. A high ball from Corns. Teal from behind punches away. Duthie smashes it forward. Frank Stemper playing very well. There's Keith Thomas. Or oh, Gallagher misjudged or mishandled the ball. Took it over the line for a ball in. 21 minutes in. Norwood by 21 points. And uh, the Bays would have to do something. But Peter, they're hanging in there, and that's pretty important. Yeah, they're missing uh, easy shots for goals as well. Duthie missed it completely. Down went Aish. Aish the free kick. Michael Aish won the big area medal last year. Hasn't had that good a year. He kicks it to his brother, Andrew. He's got nowhere to go. He swings it back to Michael Anney. He'll go long. Big Jim. Roberts is covered by two players. Frost from behind. McFarlane to Maynard. Maynard's going to bounce it out of defence to the outer side. He's got Marshall there or Liu. Liu's going to run into trouble. Well to dispatch over to Marshall. Centre wing towards McInerney. Can't bring it down. Oh, got a beautiful sit. Off he goes to the lead of Lunnis. Right there with him is Winter. Grabbed high. Free kick. Lunnis has got the free kick in the right forward pocket. 25 metres out. A high tackle. Tucked right in the right forward pocket, however. A difficult kick. He'll be kicking into this fishtail. Let's have a look at it in replay. The first tackle. Will... Oh, there it goes. He didn't realise he'd had the free kick at that stage. Michael Lunnis. 57 goals for the season. The Bays badly want him to make it 58 right now. Oh, I think he's hooked it across the line of goal. In fact, out of play on the full. Peter Marker throwing the chances away. Yeah, they haven't kicked well in. That's not an easy angle at Football Park with the way the breeze swirls, but nonetheless, no excuse for kicking out of bounds on the full. And the umpire's blown the whistle. I don't know Didn't quite what for. When you get out of bounds on the full, Peter, I think you've got to come across the mark or with the line of entry where you've got to take the kick. And uh, he went out at a tangent. Naughty boy. Jim Michael and he's kicked two goals. Put a high ball to Warhurst. He almost put him in trouble. McDermott put him down. Warhurst, Warhurst put McDermott down. Then tries to put Duthie down. Gee, he'll take them all on in a minute. He's fired up. It's his first grand final. He's only a young boy. Ace over the top, Corns, McGuinness. He's caught, no, he got it away just in time. Duthie, in comes Michael Ace. First bit of fire we've seen in a grand final. It's about time something happened. Simon's getting ready to come on. He's a goal kicker for Glenelg too. A ball in at centre wing. Button against Carey. Carey got it down to McGuinness, beautifully done. Acceleration from McGuinness. He puts it to centre-half forward. Oh, Kernahan almost took it one hand. Well, that's not a good handball from Winter. Given Glenelg every chance. Michael Anney. No, the, the free kick's going to Glenelg. McInerney was put down. I didn't think the umpire had seen it. But it was there. Free kick to McInerney. Push in the back, Peter. Well, can they do it this time? They've had a few opportunities. McInerney's 10th kick. He's 35 metres out. The angle is not great. He's kicked a goal. And a point. Taking his time. The Bays need him. I think he's got it. McInerney's second goal. At last, the Bays have steered one through. 3-7, they trail Norwood 6-4. Let's have a look at the free kick. That wasn't a good handball. McInerney's number 25. He's coming in there now. Now, was it a free kick? I now have my doubts. Nevertheless, it was given. He kicked the goal. Glenelg 3-7, Norwood 6-4. Tony Simons on, Ralph Sewer off. Into time on, as Peter said. Carey's tap away, but it was straight to McIntosh. He's been quite a little bit later. McIntosh again. Fosdyke, he's going in with a long one. He's going for home. I think he's got it. Oh, what a goal! Fosdyke's first. Norwood quick to answer.
minutes of that goal from the Bays have got their seventh on the board. 7-4 to 3-7. What value of taking the ball away from the middle. This is the player that did it. McIntosh gave it to Turbill. Didn't really need it. He gave it back and then McIntosh beautifully to Fosdyke. And a super kick for goal. Through it went. 7-4 Norwood. Glenelg 3-7. And we're past full time. Turbill again. Ducks the head. The umpire let it go. He'll sort the players out and rebounds the ball. Carey. In opposition now to Michael Annie. Gets front spot to tap away. Fosdyke can't get it out. Painter. Wobbles one to the half forward line. Holt couldn't. Jenkins can. Smart. Fosdyke again. No stemper this time. A long kick, Andrew Ace clear. Ace, Michael it is, can't pick it up. Getting back, Seabone. Rubbers one away. Quickly help there on the half-back line by Painter. Play Simons. On. Simons it was over the top. Fosdyke puts it down and it goes out, holding the ball. Technically it was there. This is Marshall. Centre wingman for the Bays. Kick number seven coming up. He puts it high, the wind holding it up. Over the top is Stemper. G's playing well. No need to retire, Frank. you are playing that well, although the kick wasn't a good one. Weston put it back to Simons. Weston was put down. Kernahan in front. Warhurst knocks it away. There's Teal. Plays it wide to Jenkins. He's got Winter loose. And if Winter picks it up, he's got a panic. He can go 50 metres with this ball if he wants to. Puts it up towards Andrew Aish. Maynard reads it well. There's McInerney. Dummies the ball. Gives it to Corns. Back to Painter. Short to Duthy. That'll miss Duthy. Not a good bounce. He did it well though to Lee Hu. Up from the back pocket. Lee Hu goes long. Looking for Kernahan. Oh, good mark for Hurst. Gee, is he playing well. Certainly realising his potential now is Warhurst. Lunnis has it knocked away from him by Winter. Winter backs it up, or well, gets it out, but only to Peter Carey. Quick as you like that handball, Lunnis. Here's Painter. Painter will go long. Kernahan in front. Well, nobody wanted it. The ball bounced. Holst hooks one back. Norwood players everywhere. Michael Annie. What a great effort. He's playing well at both ends of the ground in. Certainly is, Peter. Short to Thomas in the half-back line. Turbill. Short to the lead of Ace. Oh, he dropped to sitter. Under pressure. Working for the free kick. He can't get it. Gets the kick away. It's not a good one. It's still in touch, however. Corns comes to meet it and fumbles it across the line. 7-4 to 3-7 in a low-scoring grand final. Almost half-time. Carey. And Buck carries tap. McDermott. McInerney. Not well directed. Big Jim Michael Annie goes towards the half forward line. Adler there. Can't bring it down. First to recover. Andrew Ace paddling the ball towards the line. Under pressure. Corns has done that well. Gives a chance to Frost, who boots long out of defence. But I think he's kicked it out of play on the foot. Out it goes. The, uh, the cheer squad girls there getting into the thick of it. Turbill, the captain of the Norwood Club. Time running out, 29 and a half minutes. Kick number 11 coming up for Turbill. G's taken his time, went close to the man on the mark. Button at centre half forward, he'll knock it forward through Corns. Maynard, Keith Thomas for Norwood. Did it well. He's got Michael Annie. Michael Annie's got it, gives it back. Brotherly love here. Adler, centre half forward. Oh, they've got too many loose players, Norwood. What a magnificent pass, Peter. Michael Annie, gee, what a game he's playing. Hasn't been a dominant player for Norwood through the year. But he's doing extremely well. Adler. The goal here would be useful. Adler has missed. Way offline, a point. Norwood 7-5. Glenelg 3-7. And that's the score at halftime here at Football Park in the 1982 Grand Final. Norwood 7-5.
Glenelg 3-7. are back in their positions here at Football Park. Norda leading 7-5 to 3-7. The start of the second half, Peter Marker and Ian Day. Thank you, Bruce. Yes, a 22-point advantage to the legs. Here's the siren to start the second half of the 1982 Grand Final. Carey against Fairing. Fairing front spot. Carey got the thump away, however, out towards Duthie. Quickly into the scene now. Coming through beautifully was Winter. Drives the ball to the legs, half forward line. It's all Glenelg back there. Corns in control of the ball. No, he got a bad bounce. Likewise, Liu is a chance. Neagle, Seabone runs him down well. The ball to Ace on the half forward line. Gets clear, drives in a long one. The ball going to sit. Roberts getting there. Over the top came McFarlane, and that was a fine defensive effort. Almost a certain goal, and Roberts is down. It doesn't look as though he can get up. Yes, he can. Not looking at all happy with himself as he gets up. The left knee in a bit of trouble, but well done by Snout McFarlane. He played it well. Frost kicking off. Not a good kick, but got distance. Painter couldn't mark the ball. McGuinness runs away with it. If that was a cloudy day, it would have brought rain. Very high ball. Simons couldn't mark the ball. Fosdyke has played well for Norwood. Hooks a ball around towards Michael Aish. Maynard played it well. Roberts looking very tentative, uh, Neville Roberts. Aish looks a bit tentative too after he was met fairly heavily. He's got a few hard ones today. A ball in, right half forward flank, or left half forward flank, in fact, for Norwood. Carey couldn't get a hand, a ball taken away by Holst. That's Neagle, got it out to Andrew Ayshaw. The Norwood captain uh, put the ball down, that was Turbill. Gee, that was a mistake. If you ever saw one, he would have been running into an open goal if he collected it. Another ball in. Button and Carey. Michael Anney got up. Painter. Didn't have a look when he kicked that ball. Gallagher misjudged it. Then he got it back to McIntosh. Jenkins way down from half back. McIntosh gets through three Glenelg opponents and then kicks it out of bounds on the full. That's an anti, an anti climax in Norwood 7 6, Glenelg 3 7. Pressured him, Peter. It was three on one, but the youngster did well to get his kick in the end. Frost, a long kick. Back towards Carey, in fact, too far for that player. Ace gives chase. Jenkins gets there first. Dummies around McDermott. Gallagher, centre wing, the legs into attack again to the breeze. Button in front, one-handed, not paid. Through goes Turbo. Players stack up, and the umpire will come in and bounce. What a great effort from Button then. Must have been very close to being paid as a mark, one-handed and all. A bounce at centre-half forward. The legs in attack. Button and Carey. Carey gets the tap away. Neagle couldn't. Roberts can. Well tackled past Andrew Aish. And Maynard clears. Back towards centre field. Thumped away. Here's a chance for Smile to clear. There's going to be a clash of players. They went in fearlessly. Weston comes out not having a big day. McInerney kick number 11 almost. McIntosh. What a fine young player. Chips it out in front of Thomas at centre wing. The bounce will decide. Thomas takes his eyes off and suffers the penalty. The ball out of play. And McIntosh playing very well for Nord. 31 for Glenelg with Seabone. 7 for Nord. Keith Thomas. There's Ferring. Kerry got the tap down. Holst. Oh, stolen by Michael Aish. On a lead is Neagle. Beautifully put to that player. What great football from Aish. Gee, that kick was smothered. Gallagher's going to be caught with it. Now he gets it back to Neagle. The handball missed him. Roberts applies the tackle. Oh, Gallagher shrugged that off. Kicked the goal. His first and what an important one for Norwood. 8-6 the legs, Glenelg 3-7. Oh, Peter, it started off to be a comedy of errors, but a brilliant backup support then by Gallagher. 
Watch this handball. Neagle left it behind. Likewise, McFarlane. Gallagher in the action again. Thought about a handball. Butted up brilliantly. Bottled his first goal. And the legs kick clear. 8-6 to 3-7. Four minutes into the grand final. Second half. Gee, the Glenelg tackle on Gallagher then was uh, non-existent. Very weak. Back to the centre. Carey and Ferring. Ferring got the tap down to Turbill. Over the top towards Michael Aish. Seabohm. Across centre half forward. Kernahan. Here's a chance, Lunnis. Mark this one down for a goal. Well, a quick reply by Glenelg. He got a good bounce, Lunnis. But he's an opportunist. The Vase 4 7, Norwood 8 6. Yes, the bounce was the deferring factor there. Turbull tried to get it to Aish, who uh, couldn't quite handle it. He's not handling the ball as well as he ought to. It was Seabohm's big kick, and have a look at the bounce. And Lunnis, one thing he has got his pace quickly onto the boot. Winner couldn't catch him. Kick number four produces his first goal. The Bays 4 7, Norwood 8 6. Five minutes into the third quarter at Football Park. A very, very important one, particularly for Glenelg. They must bridge the gap. Ferring. Carey got the tap down. McGuinness off the ground. Glenelg in again. Kernahan comes out to meet the ball, gets it across to McInerney. Here's a chance. Oh, he hooked it around, but not far enough. A point. McInerney's played well. That's his 12th kick. He's kicked two goals. Norwood 8, 6. Glenelg 4, 8. McInerney, one of the few running players for Glenelg, Peter. They need more of them. We heard Neil Curley at half time saying that they've got to get more runners. Winter. Socks down, looking a bit weary. Almost McDermott. Here's a chance, McGuinness. Bombs away at goal. Winter. Fine mark. Close to the ground. He looks a little jaded, as I said. Stemper. Thinks about Jenkins. Perfectly passed. Jenkins got it on the half-back line. Jenkins could have even changed flanks. He started on the outer side. Grandstand side at the moment. Fosdyke marshals the big leap, a fine mark. Centre wing, Kerry wants it at centre half forward. But he's going over that player's head, screws one in towards Seabohm. McGuinness first recover, beautifully done. Turbill, however, he'll go short to Fosdyke. And that's one department where the legs have outstripped, or more than one, I suppose, but one of them has been there kicking the position. He and Turbill finds... He in turn finds Turbill in the butter up. Turbill checks side of centre wing. Now Gallagher gives a lead. Kick number 13 will go to Ferring. Oh, he's made a mistake. A chance for the Bays now. McGinnix can't pick it up. Good tackle. Throws it away. Michael Aish in towards Roberts. Out in front. Good mark. Over quickly, Andrew Aish. Open goal. Ought to be a goal. Quickly. Needle. Goal number three. Oh, what a breathtaking handball. I didn't think it was necessary, but it's produced a goal. 9-6. Norwood lead Glenelg 4-8. Grand final football. Have a look at it. A mistake from McGuinness. Aish picked it up. Roberts the mark. The handball was to Andrew Aish. And this was the tricky handball. That had to be spot on. It was. Neagle gobbled it up and kicked his third. Norwood 9-6. Glenelg in trouble. 4-8. The Tigers down 28 points. Fairings tap away. Thomas. Stemper. Looking for someone to pass it to. Jenkins is on the outer side. Gee, he's covering a lot of ground. Bounding out of defence. Carey won't cut him off, dragging that leg. Kick number 12 goes to the half-forward line. Michael Ace, fine mark. Norwood in full flight at the moment. Too far out to score. Michael Annie thought about leading, but aborted. Kicking in long. Michael Annie sets himself. Frost at the back. Michael Annie gets his fingers to it. Can't bring it down. Having an area there was Marshall. Turbull chips away. He's missed. Offside. Just one point. But Norwood playing extremely good football. Nine goals, seven. They lead Glenelg 4-8. Well, it's a one-horse race. If Glenelg can't pick up, they're not looking good. I think they'll have to make moves. Frost kicks off. Towering kick almost to the centre of the ground. Teal way up from centre-half back. Players stack up. There'll be a ball up. No, they won't. There'll be a free kick for a high tackle. On McDermott. He didn't know he'd have it, but it was given to him anyway. McDermott kicks to centre-half forward. 
Winter is bumped out. Warhurst falls over. Players stack up this time and there will definitely be a ball up at Glenelg centre half forward position. They need to make moves. Kernahan is number four for the Bays. Missed the ball completely. Didn't get there. Stamper, Gallagher. Very skillful player, Gallagher. Puts it to centre half forward. The big bear button knocks it on. In comes Michael Ace again. Watching handball it to his brother. Great handball to Roberts. Roberts on the ricochet. Maynard for the Bays. Down he goes, and the umpire will give him a free kick for in the back. Norwood running brilliantly, starting to tie up the Bay defence. Maynard out wide. McDermott, he can go for a run. Duthie's on the outer side, goes past that player to Lunnis. The bounce will determine. Winner gets it. Rubbers one around the corner, no one to kick to. An experienced kick towards the line. Lunnis is on the half back line at the moment. He's still conceding ground. Now the Bays will go forward. McInerney, centre field. Played well, 15 metres against McIntosh. Slowed up the game. Kick number 13 to McInerney. Well, not a good kick off the side of his boot. Thumped away back to Carey. The big fellow's got it. He had to get on the left leg. Chips out the short pass, but it's not well directed. And coming in to take it is Keith Thomas. Centre half back. Oh, he was going to play it on to Teal, but he goes it alone. Kicks long, looking for Button. He's in front of Corns. Good spoil, Corns. Duthie lending support. Gee, Button will grab him in a minute. No, well done, the Glenelg wingman. Left foot's out of bounds on the full, I think. No, just bounced in. It'll be balled in. What moves can the Bays make? Possibly Kernahan to centre half forward. Weston can't get into the game. Teal is beating him. Kernahan up high. Lannis kicks around the body. Oh, totally outnumbered Glenelg. Warhurst takes an easy mark. He's played well at, at fullback. Played very well. Kicks to centre wing. Button and Corns. Button in front. Duthie, the crumbs. A high ball to half forward. Kernahan in the middle of two Norwood players. A good, strong mark. His uh, one shot at goal in this game was awful. This will be only his fourth kick. Normally a far more dominant player. A better looking kick, but offline. A point, the Bays need goals. Glenelg 4-9, Norwood 9-7. 12 minutes into the third quarter. A 29-point advantage to the legs. Winter. Gallagher leads short, but he's going longer. Big leap by Turbel over McInerney. The Bay Rover, the first to recover. Hooks around to centre field. It's all Carey here. He'll take the mark, but he won't make the distance. Butters up brilliantly. A long kick in now by Maynard is offline. I think just one point only. Close to being out of the play on the full. But Carey can't kick on the right foot, and he's got to have a player running past to handball every time he gets the ball. The Bays did this in the second quarter, Ian. They had several reasonably easy shots for goal and missed them all. Bad kicking is bad football. That was a high tackle on Turbo, according to the umpire. Pretty chancy kickoff from Winter. Not much percentage in those unless they work. The percentage factor, of course, is that if they don't work, you can be in a lot of trouble. That's Fosdyke. To centre half forward he goes for Nord. Michael Ace couldn't take the mark. Now Weston's way down the other end of the ground. Corns. Corns goes long, but it's a floater. Fosdyke marks it very easily. Roberts on the lead. Fosdyke's going to go over Roberts. Michael Annie couldn't get there, and Corns took the easiest of marks. The field kicking of Nord is far superior to that of the Bays, although Corns finds Marshall on this occasion. Kicks long to the half forward line. Simon's a good mark. Into the open goes McGuinness, but he's going further afield in towards the half forward line. And Lannis, I'd pay that one. Yes, he's got it. The second grab. Weston wants it on quickly. He's in the pocket, but he's hooked it around towards Ferring. All Norwood back there, and it's Teal who finally takes the mark. Slips it out to Jenkins. Oh, that could have been dangerous. In fact, it still could be. Not a good kick. Duthie will get there first. Jenkins can't get around the opponent. He's well shepherded. Duthie's having trouble keeping it in play. Gallagher. 
but I think I'll find a free kick out and it's going to Duthie. The tackle was on, but Jenkins was one on two the whole time and possibly did well to get out of it like this. At least I've got to kick it in long. Duthie. Kick number seven. Going in short to the lead of Kernahan. One, two grabs. He's paid the mark, I think. It appeared to be off the top of the Norwood defender. Winters arguing. So is Warhurst. But the mark is being paid. Yes, Winters definitely had his hands on it first. But the important thing for the Bays is Kernahan's got it. 30 metres out in front. They need a goal. And I think he's missed again. No, a goal. His first. The Bays fight back. 5-10, they trail Norwood, 9-7. Well, the mark wasn't there. It's a pity the umpire can't see like a television camera can. Winter, number 22, had it first. Kernahan took it off him. There he is, Stephen Kernahan. And he kicked the goal. His first, Glenelg, 5-10, Norwood, 9-7. 15 minutes into the third quarter. The leeway for the Bays now, 21 points, fairing to Aish. Floated to the half forward line. Searching for it, there was his brother Andrew Ace. Button over the top. Put a good defensive move then by Peter Maynard. It looks to be on the bottom of the pack. Locks the ball in the area and a bounce will take place. Glenelg is staying in touch, but they've got to get closer. In fact, they've got to get in front. Norwood will come home with the slight breeze that's on. McGinnis kicked that one. I think he missed the ball. Holst. Got a bad bounce. There's Teal. Tends to hold on to the ball for a long time, Teal. Got that one away well. McIntosh under it. An easy mark. Nord have got... Oh, that wasn't a good handball to Aish. Carey let it go past. The free kick will come back to Neagle. And that's not to Nord's advantage. I don't think that's very good umpiring. But nevertheless, Neagle the free kick. Kick number 10 coming up for the Nord youngster. Button is under it. Roberts from behind. Gee, Nord. Plenty of Nord players up. Keith Thomas. Offline. The camera picked it up. 9-8 Norwood. Glenelg 5-10. Adler on for Fairing. Farquhar on for Holst. Ian Day. The Bays have got to make changes to win, Peter. Halbert's making them. Frost. Doothy at the second grab. He's at centre-half back at the moment. Looks for the lead of Farquhar. He's quickly into the action. And he's got it centre field. Plays on out wide is Weston. But he's going over that player's head. Kernahan, good pass. The base fighting back. Kernahan, 45 metres out. He kicked it from here before. Gee, wouldn't the Bay crowd erupt if he gets another one? Kicking with the breeze. Only his sixth kick. Ought to make the distance. Towards the golf course and kick underway. Nice looking kick, but it's offline. One point. The Bay still can't find the big wide opening. 16 scoring shots to 17, yet they still trail by 21 points. And Kernahan has kicked one goal three in, and normally that would be three, one or four goals. Kicking off Winter. Gallagher, Michael Aish. Michael Aish couldn't mark it. McIntosh read it beautifully. He chances his arm. Gee, that was well played from the youngster. Runs a bit like a duck, but he covers ground reasonably well. Andrew Aish. Oh, well tackled Corns. He tackled him late, tackled him well. Corns has tackled. Holding the ball. 15 metres as well. And that'll go back to Andrew H. The veteran of over 300 games, Graham Corns. Played a few with North Melbourne. Roberts underneath it, no mark. McFarlane for Glenelg kicks it clear. The race is on. Fosdyke for Norwood. Will get there first. He's got Stemper. The tackle from Simons was a good one. And there'll be a ball in at the 18-minute mark. Norwood a 9-8. The Bay's 5-11. Button in front spot. Thought about Thomas, but a free kick will go to Button. He's in front of his mark, but he's allowed to play on. Thomas. Andrew Aish settles. Shoots. Goal. Brilliantly done, Norwood. Their 10th. Aish's first, Norwood lead 10-8 to Glenelg 5-11 in the 1982 Grand Final. Possibly an umpire error when he let him go. Now, Button got the free kick. Now, there it is. The umpire should have brought him back behind the mark, but he let it play on. 
Still Glenelg got a lucky one at the other end with Kernahan's mark. Norwood get the return favour. A good goal, Aish. Norwood 10 8, Glenelg 5 11. Kernahan up, but it was a tap down by Michael Anney. McDermott in. Michael Anney can't get it clear. Michael Aish can to Gallagher. The legs into attack again. Lee, who's strong in defence, takes the mark. Centre half back. The Norwood supporters really coming to life now with their chant, Moore Wood. Moore Wood as they go towards the half forward line, but it's the Bayesian attack. Weston gets it in high, one on one situation. Lunners, oh, he's pulled off the ball. The umpire not sided. McGuinness a chance. Lunners ducks the head. He's still in with a chance. Hooks around the corner. Might not make the distance. Close on the line. Touched. Oh, what desperate stuff. I think a free kick was missed. The Bays might have been unfortunate. Another point which they don't need. Well, they need them. 68 plays 42. Winters looked like that all day. I think he looked tired when he ran out onto the ground, but what a game he's played. Kicks it off wide. In front, Duthie put the one hand up, couldn't mark the ball. Simons wants it. Duthie swings it in long. Lunnis again. Bit of looseness down there. Michael Lunnis, not a body player, but an opportunist. The player that had the opportunity 30 seconds ago to kick a goal. Kick number nine coming up. He's kicked over 50 goals this year from a forward pocket and half forward. Hasn't got one yet. He's got one now. Split the centre with that one. Lunnis, first goal. Norwood 10-8, the Bays 7-12. They needed it. Duthie did this well. Got past the two Norwood defenders. And Lunnis took a strong mark. But, gee, there's some tired players out there at the moment. Who's going to finish on the better? 10-8 to 6-12. Lunnis' second goal. Centre bounce. Glenelg in trouble. They need goals. Michael Aish got it to Fosdyke. Short to Roberts. Oh, beautifully put. Roberts wants the mark taken back. Here's the danger man. He's been reasonably well held, Roberts. One goal in the first quarter, but he's had his opportunities. Kick number six coming up. Norwood moved the ball beautifully away from centre. He may not make the distance. Gee, he's given it a huge kick. It's going to fall short. It runs past two Norwood players. Duthie runs away with the ball, kicks it over the centre. Adler drops it. Jenkins comes in, Farquhar fell over, Winter. Organelga chance, Simons. Kicking in danger, you'll find that Simons will take the free kick. And a goal here to Glenelg could see the Tiger fans come alive. Simons goes long, Carey. Two grabs, oh, he'll be paid. Three Norwood players there. Carey on his own. You can see it in the replay. The decision was right. Well, Peter, but he can't kick with his right leg now. He's only 20 metres out. Is he good enough with the left? He ought to be from there. I think he'll use his. I think he'll use his left in. I think he's too frightened about that right. Oh, early in the game, he missed one with his left foot. No, he's using his right. Oh, he's hit the post. What bad luck for the Glenelg Giant. Take a lot of courage to use that right boot with a torn muscle. But he hit the post with it. Glenelg 6-13 to the Red Legs 10-8. Opportunities going begging. No more games after this one. No second prizes in the Bay Camp. Looking anything but happy at the moment. Winters kick in towards Michael and he gets his hands to it. Can't complete it. Or oh, Turbo's at the bottom of the pack. I think you'll find you come up for him. No, it's Michael Ace. I think he's getting 15 metres as well. Shortest 15 metres in history. Michael Aish appears to have a leg problem. Yes, he's not moving all that freely as he goes to the half forward line. Out there it's Duthie almost coming out with the ball's brother Andrew Ace, but the ball out of play, out of sight. 10-8 to 6-13, a 19-point advantage to the legs, and they're going to come home with a breeze. Oh, a blatant push in the back there. And Stephen Kernahan from half-back flank. Here's the player that Glenelg want to lift from. 
Kernahan short, Weston. McIntosh gave the free kick away after the event. The umpires played it on. Lunnis, no, the umpires played that one on too. He's wheeled around onto the right boot. He's way off beam. Here's a chance for McGuinness. Schmal keeps it in play. Gee, that was dangerous. Then he plays it on. Adler and Weston. Adler playing the ball well, very close to the line. In comes McInerney. He's caught. Maynard takes it off him, then goes short to the centre of the ground. That's a dangerous kick. Down goes Marshall. He got a high tackle, but when you've got the ball, it eases the paint. Kernahan wants it at centre-half forward. Button ran down to cover him. Not a good kick. Lunnis again. No mark. Simons. Caught. He pirouetted it, then lost the ball. Neagle. Schmal was swatting flies in there too. Missed the ball and the body. They're approaching full-time. Norwood 10-8, Glenelg 6-13. That tackle of Turbill on Marshall took a lot out of the Norwood skipper. Gee, he's gone to the forward line, not looking healthy at all. Schmal, Fosdyke, the legs running again. Short towards the half-forward line. Poorly dispatched, Leo Corns. The Bay's in flight now. McGuinness is running down the outer side. If he can get past Jenkins, he can't have brilliant interception. He bounds out of defence down the outer side. Watch him go. That's his fourth bounce. Kick number 13 in board, but it's not a good one. Marshall gets out a long handball. Straight to Frost. And that promising and sometimes brilliant attack down the outer side came to naught. Out of play. Into time on by almost a minute. There's Ralph Sewer getting ready to come on for the Bays. Peter McInerney coming off. Andrew Aish again for Norwood. Roberts under it. McFarlane as well. Roberts has taken it. Oh, what a good mark. It wasn't easy. From that position, he hurled himself at the ball and took a great mark. He's going to check side it, but the. <laughs> Back you go, Neville. Nifty Neville. Back you go. You can't do that. Testing umpire Argent in his <laughs> first grand final. I think he was going to run into an open goal then. He was going to check side it. Now he's going to go for the conventional drop punt. Does he line them up? Kick number seven. He's kicked, he kicked ten out of ten with these at training. He's done it again. What a great goal, Roberts. Two goals, Neville Roberts. Barmy's pretty happy. Norwood 11 8, Glenel 6 13. As I said before, Peter, there's no second prizes. The Bay Camp don't look all that happy. Ace gets it up high, and this is a brilliant take. Body against body, one on one, and it was a one grab mark by Roberts. His second goal, Norwood 11 8, Glenel 6 13. We're at the 27 minute mark of the third quarter. Kernahan, Weston. McDermott, gee, that went straight up in the air. Knocking it forward. Getting the ball now is Painter. Here's a chance, the Bays. Who's holding who? Carey wants a free kick. So does Warhurst. They nearly take the point post with them. No free kick. Fair enough. Good umpiring. Norwood 11 8, the Bays 6 13. I know who would have had the pace, Peter. <laughs> the throw in, Carey. What a champion footballer. Simon's up over the top, throws it out. Farker almost tumbles the ball out of play. Throw in. Into time on, and the Bay's desperately needing a goal. Down by 25 points. Breaking his way through there was Stemper, left the football behind. Fosdyke cleverly. Sewer trying to get round on the dangerous left foot. Weston high in towards full forward. Carey getting back, but it's all no at all. Warris didn't take it. Carey thumps it away. McGuinness using his pace, looking for the free kick. Aish, Thomas, McDermott, likewise looking for the free kick. Thomas into the pocket. I think that McDermott has finally picked it up. No, called to play on. No free kick coming. I thought the players had stopped, but the ball has been forced out of play on outer side. A throw in. It didn't appear to be a free kick there. The players stopped, though. Back it comes, Glenelg another chance, that's McGuinness onto the right boot. Simons in front, knocks the ball clear. Lunnis comes through the pack, here's a big chance, they jump on him. The players stack up and there'll be a bounce. 
74 plays 49. There's Jack Halbert. John Halbert, the Linnell coach. 19 scoring shots each side. Nord with a distinct advantage. Jenkins, what a game he's played. Lunnis. Painter. He's got Weston. Now he'll go further afield to McGuinness. Hasn't had a big impact on this game. Youngest McGarry medalist ever in South Australia. He can kick a long way. I don't think that he'll get the distance, though. I'm going to put it in the square. Jets going to go close. All the pack go up. What's happened? Touched. Another point to Glenelg. 6-14. Norwood, 11-8. The Tigers have kicked three goals, seven with the breeze, Peter. I don't think it's going to be enough. They still trail by 24 points. And it must be very close to the three-quarter time siren. Winter. Out looking for Michael Annie, the big fellow in front. Not played the mark, or has he been? No. Stemper, Thomas, out wide to Turbull. Button wants it, but the Norwood skipper going back to now look for Button. In front is McGuinness. He'd have the pace, Button the strength. Teal's had a quieter period in this quarter. Umpire lets them put a throw in on the outer side. Over 30 minutes of the third quarter gone. Button against Kernahan. Button's tap, Liu. Corns swings out the light one. Weston, the base of the half forward line. Simon's there, wants to use his pace to get round Stemper. Keeps it in play. The youngster's got a chance. Close to that line, Lunnis. But the umpire has ruled the ball is out of play. Full forward left pocket. Simon's wanted a free kick for an intentional out of bounds, but the umpire not impressed. Five is Peter Carey. Six, Michael Farquhar. The siren's gone. The Norwood camp pretty happy about that. There's Neil Baum at three-quarter time at Football Park. Norwood 11-8, the Tigers 6-14. I'd agree with you, Ian. You're definitely not dead to their lie down. Glenelg are still in it. They're still in it with a chance. The start of the last quarter. Norwood 11-8, Glenelg 6-14. Turbill takes it away from the centre. Well, not a good kick. He was under pressure. The Glenelg player ran at him. Out comes Frost. Playing it well for Glenelg. Can kick a country mile, goes short. Oh, bad disposal. Terrible disposal. The free kick will be McIntosh. Weston may have gone to the centre for Glenelg. McIntosh will go long. Roberts is calling for it. McIntosh can't kick that far. Button underneath the ball. The big leap from behind was Neagle. There's Keith Thomas. Watch for Neville Roberts, a one-grab player. Michael Ace ran it beautifully. He's bringing it back. He's making problems for himself. Hooks it over the shoulder. Through it goes. That's his first goal. Well, what a big goal for Norwood. 12-8 the legs. Glenelg, 6-14. Well, Michael Ace has been one of the most brilliant footballers and ball handlers this day. State has produced for a long time, but today he really hasn't one grabbed the ball, and even now you see him making hard work of it. But once he recovered, there was never any doubt that he was going to post his first goal and the legs tick away. 12-8 for the Bay 6-14. There's five goals in it. Ferring and Carey, or Carey got it down, but Miss Weston with it. Stemper has his head almost pulled from the shoulder, gets it away. Aish. And here's a chance, Turbill. He's played pretty well, the Norwood captain. Gets around Seabone very easily, then goes short. Gallagher's running backwards. And coming in is Jim Teal, who's now playing at centre-half forward. A good mark, Teal. Oh, he's in trouble. The camera zooms in on him, and big Jim Teal is in trouble. Not often he goes down and doesn't get up. Let's have a look at it. Down he went. Looks like the knee, Peter. You can see him grimace as soon as he hit the turf. Well, he's up now, though. I think when you've got the ball in your hand, it makes a big difference. Hill's injuries very quickly, Peter. It's like a baby with a rattle. Up goes Button. Couldn't take the mark. Through comes Thomas. Missed the ball completely. The umpire does the right thing. And will bounce the ball right half forward flank for Norwood. Button and Carey. The bodies go in. Carey used his body well, and I think he's going to win himself a free kick. The big fellow certainly hasn't given away. He wants to play on quickly to McGuinness. A long one towards centre wing. Adler in control. Fearing it is who takes the mark in front of Corns. 
Ferring can kick a country kilometre, normally one of the biggest kicks in South Australian football. The crowd urging him to have a go, but it's a drop putt. Still a ground covering kick up towards Carey again. Carey can't pick it up. Farmed out towards McFarlane. Neagle in there, gets a beautiful set. Left foot towards goal, I think he's got another one. Number four, put your glasses down. It's going to be a tremendous effort for the Bays to get back from here. 13-8 the legs league, with they're 6 6-14. Three minutes into the final quarter of 1982. Jim Eagle played that one well. I've got an idea he used his body to get McFarlane out. Let's have a look at it again. McFarlane's number three, Neagle 48. Yes, he used it. Used it professionally. Gathered the ball and kicked his fourth very casually. 13-8 the Red Leagues, Glenelg 6-14. Carey against Ferring, who tried to go for the thump. Andrew Race. Through the hole again, a long one into fall forward, setting himself. This is going to be close to a goal in any case. All just touched. It may have even been Neville Roberts who touched the ball, but it just bounced by the line. But a tremendous thrust then from Andrew H. David Frost, the Glenelg fullback. Can Glenelg come back? They're in a lot of trouble. Diabolical strife, in fact. Corns in front. Good mark. Hasn't had an impact on this game yet, Graham Corns. What a wonderful career he's had. That's kick number six. Stamper dropped the ball. A high tackle. That's uh, David Holst, who's back on the ground. He may be at half forward. Glenelg have made moves. Weston's in the centre, but he hasn't got a lot of run. Not too good across half back. Adler. Neil Barber's made some good moves. He swings his players around very freely. Adler, a long kick to Nord's attacking zone. Teal. Was into the back of the Glenelg player, or was... No, Teal was in the middle. He was sandwiched, and he'll get the free kick. Playing at centre-half forward now. Kick number eight. Centre-half forward it goes. All Glenelg players went up. None stayed down. Andrew Ace through the pack. Neagle again. Could this be goal number five? It is. Oh, what a game he's played. A first-year player, one of the youngest players on the ground. Norwood 14-9, Glenelg 6-14. A permanent forward pocket. Watch the handball goes out. Button in after it. It was Andrew Ace who put out a lightning handball. Full face of goal, Neagle. Kick number 12, goal number 5. 14-9 to 6-14. It's Norwood's year. The bounce down. The Norwood fans have gone berserk. They can smell victory. Weston puts the ball down. Fosdyke desperate onto the ball, but it'll be a bounce. In, we're six minutes in. Miracles have happened before, but it looks unlikely. Peter, I think the uh, tough finals preparation that the Bays had with their games against Port Adelaide in particular last week is telling against them. They don't seem to be able to raise a gallop. Norwood fresh as daisies, and they go ahead through Gallagher. Up towards the half-forward line, coming across Maynard. No, that's Farquhar. Back now, a beautiful tackle on Seabone. The umpire let him go on, or was he paid the free kick? Michael Ace, one of the best tacklers in South Australian football. Too far out to score. Kick number 13. In towards Button. The big fellow lumbers to meet it, but it's Corns who takes a fine defensive mark. Gets a call from Farquhar at centre wing. Jenkins going to get a leap at it. Duthie in front takes the mark. On the half-back line, the Bay's edge out of defence to Weston. That virus has certainly taken a lot out of Paul Weston, a brilliant footballer. But today he just can't seem to get into the game at all. Stayed home all day yesterday. Trying to get himself fit. Hasn't worked out. Carey, still working hard. Painter. Adler. Ten metres. OK. Well, he read the ball pretty well. I think it was on him before he knew it. Took a touch mark. Adler will go long to centre-half forward. Teal coming in from behind in front, Seabohm. Don't really know what that was for. According to the umpire, it was a high tackle, but I think the umpires are a little bit uh, keen on high tackles these days. Anything that looks like a high tackle, they give a free kick. Maynard. Kicks it wide. Gee, that's dangerous. Marshall is outnumbered. Plays it well, though. He's got McFarlane. He won't use him. McInerney's short. The kick from the left 
foot wasn't bad, but it just missed him. Holster's got it for the base. Is there anybody home? Lannis. Great mark winner. Played a top game in. Oh, yes. Peter, one of the most experienced players on the field, but his marking has been superb. Kick number 14, but it's Lannis with the opportunity. Hooks around the corner in towards full forward, pushing and shoving. Simons! The mark stands. Well done. The boy is not built big. He's built like a Biafran donkey. But he stood his ground beautifully to take the mark. 25 metres out in front. John Halbert praying. Don't think it's helping his hair problem. This final. Simons seldom misses. That's his first goal. And the Tigers' tail is still wagging. 7-14, they trail Norwood 14-9. Actually, that was an amazing mark because Simons actually pushed the Norwood player out. There was the mistake from Winter. Have a look at Simons, the fair-haired player. He pushed the Norwood player out. There it is. Out he goes. And he stands up and takes the mark. A good effort. Glenelg need a lot more, but at the nine-minute mark, the Red Legs 14-9, Glenelg 7-14. Ferring trying to work out which way that Kerry's going to come in so as he can come in head-on. He gets over the top of Kerry this time, but I think the Bay Ruckman still got his hand to the ball first. He certainly has now. Ace tried to crash the tackle that was high, and I think he's going to get a free kick. Not looking all that healthy, but he'll put the legs into attack. Roberts gives the lead. Likewise, Teal going in high, but it's Button. Frost. Roberts wants backup support. Turbul dummies twist into the open goal. I think he's missed. Oh, he did everything right except kick a goal. A point to the legs, 14-10. The Lurg, 7-14. 24 scoring shots to 21. The Roberts handball then was lightning to Turbul. Set it up beautifully. The Norwood captain couldn't quite finish it off. Corns is still at centre half back. He's on Teal. Frost kicks off very long as he normally does. Kerry does it beautifully against Ferring, then goes short with an ugly left footer. Can't use the right boot as we know. Weston, not in the game much, gets it forward. Smile. He's done it reasonably. He's had a couple of fast rovers to stand and he's done it pretty well up there. The ball in. Kernahan is four, Ferring is 40, Kernahan in front, gets it wide, that's Simons, he's tackled well, the ball comes out to McInerney again, Glenelg go forward, no one home, Warhurst very close to the line, it'll go out again for another ball in, 14-10 the legs, Glenelg 7-14. The big crowd hoping for a Bay revival, to put a bit more action into the final quarter, Warhurst. McIntosh, all day their disposal has been superb. Winter, long to the half-forward line. Michael Ace using his body over his head. Maynard or Liu, it was, off the side of his boot. Andrew Ace, back to brother Mike. Turbill. Gallagher, watch him go towards goal. Oh, no, he looked for Winter. Normally, Gallagher would eat those goals. Duthie, a hurried kick. McInerney, look for Liu. Corns, Holst, the base over the half forward line with a long kick, Teal getting back and he'll take the defensive mark, or no, he's going to get the free kick in actual fact, that's against Farquhar who came back into that play. A little bit lucky, Farquhar appeared to be looking at the ball, Adler to centre wing, Duthie and Aish, in comes Michael Aish, Maynard's got it, tries to get rid of it, Neagle kicked it. Didn't go very far. Players stack up and the umpire will bounce it. Some tired legs out there, particularly bay legs. 14-10 to 7-14. A mammoth task confronting the Tigers. Carey and Button, a couple of giants. Neagle almost missed it. Keith Thomas beautifully played. He doesn't miss many. Through it goes. Great goal, Thomas. His first goal, and that's the nail, the final nail in the coffin. I don't think Glenelg can get up from here. 15-10 Norwood, Glenelg 7-14. Yes, it's the legs, the fresh legs that have been too much for Bays in the end. And also the better disposal all day. And that was a classic example. What ball control. 
Corns can't catch him. And a magnificent running shot for goal by Keith Thomas. Roberts urging the umpire to whistle the goal. Neil Baum there, chewing madly. Carey got it down. Weston, McInerney. Here's some run for the Bays. Kernahan's in front. Up he goes. No mark. Lannis. Oh, he's caught. Oh, he's getting a free kick. He was jumped on by a Norwood player. Must have been a high tackle. I, I didn't really see much wrong with what he did. Let's have a look at it. Yes, the umpire saw the, the hand go over the shoulder. So Lunnis is going to line it up. Kick number 12 coming up for Michael Lunnis. He kicked two goals in the third quarter. He doesn't normally miss. He's missed that one. Glenelg 7-15 to the Red Legs 15-10. All day the Bays have been struggling, shooting for goals, and it's still no different in the dying stages of 82. Well, that's dangerous football. Simons intercepted, around on the dangerous left leg, shoots for goal, and he's missed again. The handball was on, but Simons was confident. Michael Aish, or Andrew Aish it is, a long kick to the half-forward line. Holding ground well. Winter's playing an attack at the moment. Jenkins get the set. They hang on to him. It was... It's the way the ball will go, but McIntosh accepts it. Some 15 metres closer goal. Norwood playing possession football. Could go back to Jenkins. It's the way to do it. Plus 15 metres. Advisable football. The crowd happy about it. I would think mainly Norwood supporters. Danny Jenkins, what a fine game he's played. 25 metres out now after having come back from the half back line. That's how far that he's rebounded. Kick number 15. 45 degree angle, and he has read it through. His first goal, Norwood going for strength to strength, 16-10. They lead Glenelg 7-16. Barmy doesn't smile very much, but there's one. Beauty Barmy. He'll be smiling tonight, Peter. Probably ever. Loose forward work, or loose defensive work from Glenelg. I don't know that Jenkins had to fall over, but if you got the chance to fall over, you might as well do it, because you can fall an umpire and get yourself 15 metres. Glenelg 7-16, Norwood 16-10. Kernahan on the ball now against Michael Annie. Colonel Annie's tap away towards Michael Annie. No, at least it was McInerney who got the kick away, but Adler takes it in defence. Swings it out wide. Turbill, a chance for the legs to go into attack again. On the lead is Roberts. Handball, McIntosh. And again, Nagel. Button shoots, and he's missed. So easy. The Bays can't raise a gallop, they're that tired. Had a fine season, but as I mentioned, that hard finals build-up has made them leg weary. David Frost kicking off. Kernahan, here's a player that hasn't been able to get into the game for the Bays. Michael Aish going from strength to strength as well for Norwood. Corns behind, nearly takes the mark. There's Roberts. Maynard. McGuinness, he hasn't played well either. Weston to half forward. Farquhar from behind. There's Jim Teal and Jenkins. Jenkins short looking for Gallagher. He's beautifully put. Gallagher dropped it. Jimmy LaHue over the top. Painter back to LaHue. McInerney wants it. Not the best kick, but McInerney's got it. Oh, he could have played on. Kerry wants it wide. Now he wants it in the square. McInerney's confused. So am I. Peter Carey, in the meantime, trundles after the ball, but the Red Legs are going to come out of trouble. Schmal it is. Warhurst, great back up and full back. Turbill plays a kick behind the game beautifully. Roberts on a lead. Super football. Norwood would do it so well. Turbill's had 20 kicks. The Roberts mark. Not much that McFarlane could do about that. Roberts has two goals, and this is kick number nine. Will he disguise it, or will he go long? Giving it plenty of air. 
Well, that's going to be touched just. Norwood 16 12 to the Bay 7 16. All day the kicking to position of the legs has been superb. I've killed the Bays in that area. Frost. Simons. Oh, swung it out wide, but that wasn't good football. Didn't give Corns a chance. Thomas. Run the legs off his counterpart. Turbo's got to beat Lee Oak. Does it well. Goes in short. Nagel could kick his sixth. Decides to go back. Time is on Norwood's side. In no hurry at all. His 14th kick. He's already booted five. Tough angle. The breeze will help. Or he can kick number six. What a game from a young man in his first season, full season of league football. Now Neil Barm is allowing himself a smile. Look at the Norwood camp. Can't lose from here, 17-12 to 7-16. This is how it was done. That was perhaps almost holding the ball. And the umpire summed it up. On it went to Neagle, and he kicked his sixth goal. Michael Annie and Kernahan. Line ball, Sewer can't. Thomas can look at him take the ball away. Charts Gallagher. Gallagher goes in short again. Gee, he's kicked a few short. Michael Ace around Seabohm puts it in the air, gives it a chance. His second number. Oh, it's offline. Gee, it looked to be good from the eye. The crowd went up and hit the post. Thought it came on the inside. David Frost, plenty of distance. Gee, is a superb kicker of the ball. Mike Lanny in front, Kernahan behind. The umpire is going to play it. Kernahan not happy. Michael, Michael Lanny's played very well. His first half was good. When the heat was on, he was there. Both ends of the ground. Big Jim. Roberts. Winters down at full forward. Couldn't take the mark. Lee Hu. Hasn't got anyone to kick to. Finally chooses Kernahan. Good mark. This is where Glenelg have got problems. Most of their players are down on the back line. Teal fell over. Farquhar's after it. So is Weston. McDermott comes in. Sewer back on the ground. Oh, he's got Painter at centre half forward. He's swallowed by Jenkins. Back goes Painter. Does it well. McInerney. This must be a goal, Glenelg. All Kerry's got to do is uh, do that. Kerry's first goal. Gordon Elg have got a much belated one. 8-16 the Tigers, Norwood 17-13. Well, Carey's got a goal, but it doesn't hide the disappointment on the big fellow. He's had a magnificent season, and what a wonderful player he's been for Gordon Elg. Probably the best they've run the ball all day, although it was a fine effort by Jenkins to get it away. And uh, Painter worked hard. McInerney just chips it away. And the Bays have got goal number eight on the ball, but all too late. Back to the centre. Kernahan. Michael Annie now. Kernahan smashes it forward. Painter again. Tries to kick it in mid flight. Teal and Stemper. Warhurst. Here's another chance to the base. Through goes Lunnis. Carries the ball too far. Weston comes in to help. Gets the handball out, but to no effect. It ends up with Keith Thomas. Norwood on the run again. Nagel leading. Thomas will go long. Roberts from behind. Couldn't take the mark. Corner, Corns missed it. McFarlane to Holst. Corns again. The big bear button. Neagle. The sixth goal man. Back to Keith Thomas. A high ball. Michael Aish. Oh, great mark, Aish. How did he do that? He read it good. Never took his eyes off the ball. It faded past Kernahan. And the champion took it very close to the ground. Aish has had 11 kicks and five handballs since half time. He certainly lifted. Kick number 16. He's taken the right hand goal post with the left hand. It came back. That's his second goal. Norwood 18-13 to Glenelg 8-16. Full marks to Norwood playing brilliant football. Their handball all day has been superb and it's been quick. Thomas has played a fine game. 
Look at the courage of Michael Ace and the brilliance. We see a bit of a dust up centre field there, but uh, it'd be stupid to get reported at this late stage of the season, and there's nothing really riding on it now. Kernahan again. Oh, he got very high for that one. He smacked it to centre half forward. Teal stood his ground and boots the ball back. Maynard and Gallagher. Maynard got front spot. I really don't know what that free kick was for, but perhaps one out of sympathy from the umpire. Sewer. Not a good kick. Doesn't give his forwards any chance at all, and it's gone over for a ball in. Adler in has played well since coming on, and I guess you could say that Nord have not had a passenger. That's right, Peter. They've played fine, supportive football, and we've mentioned time and again how well they've used the ball, and they've just been far too good. But they had the easier run. But that's football. Thomas over the top and out of play. Just thinking about Phil Gallagher in the second half. He hasn't kicked the ball. He'd be one of the best kicks on the run that I've ever seen. And each time he's got the ball, he's gone for a little short pass. And maybe the pulled hamstrings worrying him again. Turbul. Stemper. A tired kick to the half forward line. Corns off the fingers of Maynard. Too far for McDermott. Duthie. Marshall wants it on the outer side. Further still is Zip Zap Sewer. He'll get there first. No, Marshall got the bounce. What a fine tackle. Holding the ball. Wayne Smart. Fitted into the back pocket beautifully with the injury to Greg Nicholson, the regular back pocket player. And he's had a fine season. Fosdyke. On the lead goes Roberts, but he's kicked over that player's head. Andrew Aish. Back to Roberts, put him in a pocket, he snookered. Nowhere to go, gets it back to Ace, brilliantly done. Heads for goal again, lines him up and pops through goal number 19. His second, 19-13 to 8-16. That's the eighth goal this quarter for Norwood. Watch the way that Roberts held up the handball to the latest moment. Got it back to Ace, gave him all the room he needed. Andrew Ace. Wearing one stitch as well. And his uh, left forehead, I think, put the ball through for his second goal. At the centre bounce. Into time on. Kernahan playing his best football for the afternoon. But, oh, what a fine performance. Young McIntosh. All courage, all go. Only 18 years of age. One of their best players. McDermott in trouble. Kernahan, Turbull, McInerney. To the half forward line. Farker underneath the ball. The run there of Sewer, not good enough. Smile again. A high kick back to centre field. Weston's going to get the sit. Can't take the mark. Thomas in front. I don't think he ever got off the ground, but they didn't park, pay the mark in any case. Stemper. High ball to the half forward line. David and Goliath. Kernahan against Turbill. Seaboam under pressure. Liu likewise. Gets it out well. Kernahan, Corns. Thought about another handball. Kicks long to the half forward line. Sewer up high. Got very high. Couldn't take the mark. Farquhar caught. Norwood players everywhere. Michael Annie to Teal. He'll use Jenkins. Jenkins has played half back like a half forward. He's run all day. Short to Andrew Aish. And Norwood are in complete control. Players running everywhere. He goes past Duthie, then short, Turbull at centre half forward. Well, this marks the end to uh, a great season by the Norwood Football Club, In Yes, Peter. Did you see the frustration on Graham Corns' face then? Whose man is this? I can't pick up the whole lot, but that epitomises Norwood all day. They're always finding the spaces, always running, and they've just made the base chase Guernseys all afternoon. It's been a superb performance. Disposal by Nord has been magnificent. 23 kicks coming up for Turbill. He's the captain. He got his first goal. He'd be pretty happy. 20 goal, 13 Norwood. Glenelg, 8-16. Peter, you ought to see the media around Neil Barn, the coach. We'll just have a look at the replay first. Even on the left foot, Nord have proved supreme. Turbill made the space. Corn's coming in. And uh, he's been a fine player for Nord over many years. His number of games has been restricted because he's had, uh, he's had many crippling injuries to his knee. The bounce down again. 
It's a formality now. There's not much time to go. Weston got it to Simons. Farquhar back to Simons. The full forward it goes. Adler, Sewer, Lunnis. The umpire's going to give a free kick. Who to? I think it might go to Lunnis. He might have got a high tackle. The Norwood fans are delirious. I cannot wait for that siren and then pandemonium will break out when it goes. I think Barmy's been crack cracking a few jokes. Been plenty of laughter down there. Lunnis puts it through. That's his third goal. And his 13th kick. Glenelg 9-16 to Norwood, 20 goal, 13. The forlorn face of John Halbert. We might be able to pick up the free kick here. Lunnis comes away with the ball. He got a high one. And the umpire gave him the free kick. But in, I guess if you were, when you're in a position where you know you're going to lose, the thoughts that'd be going through Halbert's mind would be probably all projected towards what? Next year? Well, certainly, Peter, but also the woeful uh, record of Glenelg in finals. They've been, what, in this is their ninth in the last uh, last dec or, de decade or 12 years, and uh, they just can't win them. And uh, I think it's the way you get beaten. And uh, they have been beaten pointlessly this afternoon. But it's been a fine effort to get to the grand final. You saw Stephen Highwood's face in the screen a little while ago. He was their reserves coach, and uh, he won a premiership, but... Uh, it's the senior premiership that counts. Marshall has been paid the mark on the outer side. Over 30 minutes of time has gone, and it must be very close to the final siren. A nice kick by Marshall has found Simon. Simon's too far out to score. On the lead was Lunnis. Underground awards that player. He almost took it. One grab by Adler, smothered well. Thomas needs backup support. Fosdyke still conceding ground. Teal. Again, a fine Lunnis, still with plenty of run in his legs. Inside the half forward line, he puts it up for Carey. Super stands his ground. The big fellow could just lumber to meet the ball. The umpire says, kick into the danger. And Peter Carey holding his hands. And it just could be his last kick for football in 1982. Now, is he going to give it to his right leg? No, he won't even take the chance. McDermott misses, and that epitomises Glenelg's effort all afternoon. Another point to Glenelg, 9.17 to Norwood, 20.13, and we've played 31 and a half minutes of the game. That tells the story. Poor old Peter Carey just couldn't kick the ball. The Norwood captain's got it. Greg Turbill. <laughs> He's taking his time, too. I think he wants a rest. He wants the siren to go. Keith Thomas, he takes off, puts it to centre wing. Or Gallagher was in the back of Maynard. And Maynard will take the free kick. The siren must be close. 32 minutes have just passed. Kernahan's got it now. He'll give it to McInerney. McInerney has been Glenelg's biggest kick winner. Over 20 kicks. There's Duthie. The Glenelg players are almost out on their feet. Michael Annie. Gallagher. Siren Masco. Corns in front. The big bear button knocks it close to the boundary line and out it goes. There's Barmy. He knows he's got the 1982 Premiership. He'll be the second Victorian coach to win a flag here. Mike Patterson was the other one. The old Swamp Fox from Richmond. Both from Richmond. He won it with North Adelaide in 1971 and 1972. Barmy's going to do it in 1982. Maynard goes to centre half forward. Sewer's got the ball. But they're all playing from memory at the moment. There it is. 32 minutes, 55 seconds into the last quarter. The siren's gone. Neil Barmer's getting the pats on the back and the accolades from all of his colleagues. A great victory, Norwood. 20 goal, 13 to Glenelg, 9-17. Neil Baum congratulating his players. There's Neville Roberts. That's his first grand final. He didn't play in one with Richmond. There's Philip Gallagher. It was pretty hard for him to come back into the team. Wayne Schmal is 42 there. Baum is a very popular character with the, the Norwood club, the Norwood people, and more particularly or more significantly with the Norwood players. Neil Button. 
is number 30. It's been a great year for Norwood. They destroyed the opposition in the last two months. They had a record victory against Port Adelaide at the parade. They beat Sturt by 10 goals at Unley. Neville Roberts kicked 10 that day, kicked 11 the following week. Barmy is delighted. Bruce McAvaney. Yes, Peter. Philip Gallagher, it's been a great team performance. You must be thrilled. Yeah, particularly pleased with today's effort. Uh, we played very well in the finals, I thought, without really dominating any, any game, but I thought we were well in control all day. Well, I spoke to your father at halftime, Phil, and Sammy and you have now played in Nord's last six premiership wins. Yes, not a bad effort, I suppose. How does this one compare with 75 and 78? It's, it's probably a better effort because I think we were the best side over the season. Well, I felt we were the best side over the last half of the season. We showed that in the final, so it's very, very pleasing. Phil, I'll let you celebrate. Well done. Congratulations. Thanks very much. I think we'll grab Neil Balm. Balmy, only the second Victorian coach to coach a premiership side in South Australia. Congratulations. West Australian, me. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you are too. Yes. Um, a bit of a letdown, I guess, now because it was such a big effort. And, oh, I'm very proud of the boys. I thought they were terrific. Could you enjoy the footy today? Well, the last, uh, last 15 minutes the pressure was off a bit, but then it wasn't much of a game then. So, uh, it's very hard to enjoy because there's a lot of pressure on, but um, if I'm ever going to enjoy one, today was the day because they played beautiful footy. We made a few areas of disposal or whatever, but their effort was there all the time. Neil, let's go back to that day at Adelaide Oval when South Adelaide beat Nord 13 weeks ago. Nord have won 12 games since then, and only been beaten once. Well, that was a very down day. Um, I didn't think we could make it from there, but um, it speaks volumes for the, f the blokes. They just hung in there. They expected to win, and we got over that, and they've just played very well since then. We'll let you go, Barmy, and join the presentation. Congratulations, Thank you, Thank you very much. Oh. Thank you, oh, it's unbelievable. It's marvellous. Bad luck, Gnilg. Do the hard way, run out in the end. I'd like to thank all those magnificent men there. Coach Neil Barm, had Wally Miller, and of course the spectators. It's beautiful. Ladies and gentlemen, I th I'm sure you'd all like to hear from the coach, Neil Barm. Neil Barm. Well, I've had enough things to say today. The only thing I'll say now is uh, what a magnificent effort from these guys. Roberts has uh, hugged a few things in his life, but he's never hugged anything as memorable as that. The Premiership Cup, what a great comment from Mr. Max Bashir, the SANFL president, when he said, go for a run around the Oval, lads. You wouldn't think they'd have the energy, but a magnificent victory. There's Jimmy Teal. Warhurst there, number 40. He's got a bottle of champagne, Bruce. He must be pretty happy, and uh, young Warhurst did play a great game. Neville Roberts there, and uh, Neville Roberts has made it clear to the public that what he wanted to do was to play in a grand final, and now he's done it. Peter, great performance, wasn't it, by Roberts? Uh, he came across, of course, from West Torrance at the beginning of this season. I think Nord paid $37,500 for Roberts, and uh, 83 goals in the season. He's made a lot of others, and... Uh, he said at the beginning of the year that's the reason he left West Torrance because before he retired he wanted to play in a premiership side. Well, he's, he's got his wish. Yeah, he's definitely a winner, Bruce. He likes success, don't we all? But uh, he put himself on the line and 
I think that Neil Baum in his playing days at Richmond, he, he had a lot of a association with Neville. He knew how good he was. Paid the price and got the result. But gee, they didn't have a passenger, Bruce, not one. McIntosh, when he went into the centre, was a top player for Norwood. There they go, running around the ground. And uh, McIntosh in particular, I think, Bruce, was a great move to the centre. It was, Peter. McIntosh's performance was fantastic. He'll probably be the best player on the ground when you sum it up. Neagle got six goals. He just doesn't miss, does he, from the forward pocket? Oh, he hates to miss. He's a great kick. Michael Aish got better as the game got on. So did Andrew Aish. I thought the half-back line was magnificent all day. Jenkins on one flank. Stemper on the last. And, Peter, I think it's Frankie Stemper's last game. And what a way to go out for him. Well, I guess he, he's made the decision, but... Uh... Oh, I don't know. He, for a player that's playing so well, it's a bit like Bruce Dool. Bruce Dool said during the year he might give it away, and, and now he's going to play on. Perhaps Frank might wait, might uh, change his mind, Bruce. Well, the incentives there. I mean, there's a very good chance that Nord can make it two in a row next year. They've got a lot of young players. I doubt whether any of the other players will be retiring. So there's a great chance that Nord can go on. So he might go on in 1983. But what about? Just for one moment, thinking of Graham Corns and perhaps John Howard. I wonder if we've seen the end of Corns here today and what a great effort it was by him. Yeah, I've, I've got a feeling it is, Bruce. I think I don't think Graham Corns will play again. He's str uh, strongly rumoured to uh, have a big chance for coach of South Adelaide. John Howard, I don't know. I guess that uh, his position will be summed up in the next week or so, but... Yeah, I, I guess that uh, with the grand final, there's a lot of sadness as well. Some players play their last game, and as you say, Corns and Stemper, it could be their last game. Well, the Nord players are about to make their way down the race. Ian Day will be down there to join them in just a moment. What a great day it is for Nord, from the young, youngest McIntosh to the oldest, like, like Button and Stemper and those players. Of course... Players like Greg Nicholson have had a lot to do with this Nord win. And, of course, John Wynn's been very much involved, too, with the coaching side of it. And I think they're enjoying it, along with Glenn Rosser, just as much as Neil Baum. I think Ian Day's in a position a to talk win. to the Nord very, players. Very, very happy, Ian. Very tired by the sound yes, of this, too. very tired. Did you think that it was going to be as easy? Well, it wasn't easy. <laughs> well, yeah, right. I mean, did you think he was going to win by uh, as much? Well, I was pretty confident during the week. Uh, I got a lot of confidence in the kids, and... Uh, and I knew that they'd keep running, so uh, I thought we had a pretty good show. And, you know, I figured if we were going to win, we'd win well. To half-time, it was a very tough, low-scoring, bruising affair. But finally, you got clear in that last quarter. And I thought it was your running players that did it for you. That's right. They kept on uh, coming down. The ball was coming into full forward high. We were fortunate enough to uh, bring the ball to the ground. They kept coming through and pinching it and kicking goals. And it made me real happy. You're very subdued, really. Uh, I remember in 1978 when I interviewed you, you were really whooping it up. Perhaps time tells you to take it a little easier? A big night. Oh, the body's too sore to get too excited at the moment. I've got to get some anaesthetic into it. <laughs> Neil, congratulations and well played. Thanks, Ian. Right, we'll try to find some few other players. 